everybody and welcome back to Wapleville. We are going to conclude the month of Shadow and Flame with, well, some Shadow and Flame like a Balrog. Yeah, that's what that is. And this is an ancient, literally ancient metal Balrog. That <laughs> I just did a video actually on the prepping of this last night and I'm hoping that the base all holds together here. Because this, this thing, it weighs a ton. He's not very... The wings are plastic, but all of this, the, even the flames on top of here, that's a big old chunk of metal. The sword is metal. Tail is metal. Everything about this guy is metal, except for those wings, which means he is exceptionally heavy. We will be painting him in oils. We did, and I'll... Hey, Amrit Wolf, how are you doing? Yeah, here here he is. This is a actually a f all sculpy base here for the most part. I try to give him extra support around his feet here. Tons of glue, pins, all of that kind of stuff. I, I did what I could on the body, trying to file mold lines and re-sculpt things. What was interesting <clears throat> was the extra flames that I was able to add here. And I even added some to his sword right here. So, yeah, you couldn't, I guess you could see it last night when I sent you the picture of when the liquid text gel was white, but today it was all clear, and it was really weird because you could see all the way through to the seam where the, the metal and stuff was and everything. That was pretty crazy. So there was actually a lot of sculpting done on this. All of this back here on the wings had to be sculpted in because, well, there were gigantic, huge gaps. There was huge, even bigger gaps under here. I had to hack away at stuff and carve things away. <clears throat> I also added some more of the Liquitex Heavy Gel. It's the same gloss gel that we use for water effects, for even for sculpting hair. But it works great for sculpting fire. I was able to get a bunch of extra fire on him here. And we added some skelly friends there. <clears throat> hey, Estravox, how are you doing? <clears throat> Sorry, I guess my voice is going to be not so great today. Too much voice stuff. I think I filmed six hours of videos yesterday. <laughs> so here is, this is the Green Stuff World Texture Roller that we used. You can see how we kind of chopped that out of there. It, it's pretty appropriate for, I mean, is it necessarily exactly what they showed in Mori on, on the movie? I don't know, it has dwarf runes there. It's got some not work. Yeah, it's got a big old dwarf face. We're calling that close enough. We will be using our oils here. Got them laid out on the palette. So Astrovox, I hope that you had a good weekend. There's our titanium white, brilliant yellow pale, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep. That is our Marion Street fluorescent orange right there. Cadmium scarlet, fanchion red, cadmium red deep. It's our brown matter. Oh, actually, no, that's their quinacronome, golden brown, otherwise known as brown matter. Asphaltum, ivory black, burnt umber, indigo, last but not least, Van Dyke brown. Hey, Monkey Love, how are you doing? Uh, oh, it's Astrovox, did pretty good. Yeah, it was, it was very up-tempo here. I think I must have filmed four videos during the course of the weekend or something crazy like that because this is a video that I'm going to be editing and rendering when we are done here yeah so there's there's more to do yet video wise now so i won't give about which which videos were you checking out there i'm going to cut up some sponges here too so here let me just move the bow rug out of the way here and not knock over every single light that i have we're going to need i don't know it, this is going to be a little bit different approach a little bit of a different approach to the pre-glaze. The base might get some pre-glaze, but the bow rug itself, maybe not so much. Oh, Mad Dave, how are you doing? Sorry that I, I missed you there. Now, I it'll be tough to fit him on screen completely because of, well, A, the wings, but he is almost entirely metal. He is just one gargantuan hunk of metal. So yeah, the the wings were plastic. 
Although apparently this is from the old days when everything was metal. But yeah, all these other pieces, that's metal. See these two big hunks right here? All that stuff is all metal. So that was, oof, that was interesting to say the least. All right, we'll call that good enough for sponges there. We have a collection of our Royal Lang Nickels. I'm going to get some of my sponges over there, maybe. Or maybe over here, actually. Probably a better place for them. I don't usually have the chamois sponge out here, so it's a little different setup. Because, well, there we go. Uh, Mad Dave, this is for this is for me to be playing with, so we will be going traditional. Now, there is something a little bit different here. I added a whole bunch of extra fire to this. I added fire to the sword, added fire to this, sculpted a whole bunch of extra scales on here. You've got the references in the corners over there. I was thinking about sculpting some extra flame here. Honestly, I was really seriously considering that. I just I said, well, maybe not, because this is actually meant to be played with, which is why this base is so incredibly heavy right here. That is a great extra firm Sculpey on top of that, trying to make it even more solid. So what I will do here is I might just throw some stuff down on the base real quick. We'll throw a little bit of our umber and, and, and black and other such things down here on the base. Maybe even a little bit more liquid so that they actually, I don't want to say dry quicker, but they just kind of stabilize quicker. Yeah, we'll just get that. I actually, uh, there's a, a metal axe there. I think that's part of the Reaper stuff. Some of the GW skulls are in there. Another reason I want this to be more liquid is I gotta, there's some crevices that need to be. Yeah, we need to really get that stuff down into some of these crevices here. And that sometimes can be not the easiest thing to do. Especially not with acrylics. Ah, uh, glad you are, Mad Dave. I've I've been wanting to do this actually all month long. There's just been no chance because this this thing took hours and hours to get ready. That's why, that's why I filmed the whole video just on trying to get this thing ready just to this stage. That's how involved this thing was. Now this is probably the the largest fire actually that I've ever really done. I've I've done you know little batches of fire here and there. And I'm I'm gonna have less of this get out here because I need to actually be holding this. So yeah, we won't put too much of it out here. I'm not even sure I'm gonna be rubbing much of this stuff off either. I might just leave this here for quite a while and just let it set for as long as I can. And I'm just going to yeah, some a little bit of asphalt in here. Maybe this will start to maybe warm things up just a touch. And, and I realize that some of this is going to be in the dark. So I'm not really going to focus too much on the base. Because I really don't know how much you guys are going to even be able to see of it. Don't know how much further down I want like all the crackly stuff to be on his legs either. But we can make we can make some changes on that. I am gonna get, go with a little bit of the asphaltum here if I can even squeeze that brush in. So that that's really all I want to do here. Just get that stupid brush in there, just to try and get some actual paint on some of these areas here. And this is the part. See, I'm even gonna I'm gonna let that rest on that tail. Yeah, I'm just going to do that just to take a little bit of the stress off of this here. I think I've got all of these areas with, with just something on them. It doesn't have to be really fancy. There just has to be some... Oh, no, nope, there's still a... There's still a couple open spots here. So I think now we've got that covered. Quite literally got it covered. Now, as I'm going to move up the body here, 
I'm going to start to maybe introduce a little bit more of that asphaltum in there. Uh, that does cool it down a touch. The, the tail for yeah, I won't do too much out here on the tail. That's it's going to be almost like remember that creature caster. What the heck was that? That that king of Malefica or whatever it was, and there was there was some tentacles on that that basically really never got painted much past probably the glazing stage because well I had to hang on to it there, and I can also see that the brush is going to be blocked from a few areas here. When I was trying to do the sculpting on parts of this, oh my goodness, it was frustrating to say the least. Hey, Dino Titan Edition, how are you doing? Uh, let's see, I'm going to just watching the video on how you transfer the oils into the bottle. Now, Homunculus, it's, it's the only time it's not directly from the bottles is if I've just, the bottles have run out and I need to either film something or do something like this, like... Here, the fluorescent orange, I just have never had a chance to refill that. So that's just straight out of the tube, which is no big deal. Probably of all the paints, that's probably one of the easier ones to work with straight out of the tube. The ones that you almost can't work out of the tube, which I found interesting, that's your interference colors. I don't even know how, well, I think the only way you can use those when they're not thinned out is to actually mix them with another color. That's, I guess that's how people use those for just regular painting. Because I, oh my goodness, yeah, that stuff is crumbly and nasty straight out of the tube. It's actually more usable when you thin it down the way we do just for our miniature painting. Uh, let's see, Dino's doing pretty good. Deburring the centaur, it's going to take me a while, and I'm not really sure how to get rid of all the mole lines. So we've got Outsider Miniatures, who's no longer outside. He is inside. So Outsider Miniatures, I hope that the, the weekend, rest of the weekend, treated you good there. Now I'm starting to warm things up a little bit. There's some of that quinacrinome, some of the asphaltum together here. Starting to get things a little, a wee bit on the warmer side now. And there's going to be a lot of times where I just accidentally hit stuff here. That's just kind of, I can see that's pretty much how this is going to work. I can see that's very much how this is going to work. Because there's just too much stuff sticking out all over the place, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay, that we'll call that good enough there. Now we have to start getting some of our lighter colors into this. And we got Stila in here too. Let's see, the tails from the horse body have mold lines between it. And it's impossible to get rid of all. Well, Dino Titan Edition, I think I've talked about the same material that I use to sculpt water effects and the flame effects here. I use that all the time, especially on bigger resin figures where you have stuff like mold lines that goes through the hair, right? Because how the heck are you going to get rid of that stuff? That actually helps you to get rid of that stuff because you just paint over it and you're sculpting as you're painting it. Now I am going to take some of my awful white here. We're going to take some of our cadmium yellow here. Now we're going to start to introduce some of our lighter tones if we can. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, Outsider Miniature says that the weekend was good. You finished your Lord of Malice, so I'll ride the sense of accomplishment uh -huh, for the next 20 or 30 minutes. Well, that's uh, I'm glad you're able to get that thing finished because, well, we know what a beast those things are. So very cool. I saw I saw your your pictures of that. That was looking really fantastic. Now of course when when you're doing your fire source right at the at the core of it, it better be almost like a lemon yellow color. I'm even not gonna 
I'm going to hang on to that base as little as I can. Also going to use as little paint as I can here. And I'm just going to have to shove this brush down in all these crevices here. Might even have to thin that down a pinch there just to make it flow. Ah, Cromnius, yes, I I kind of was I was getting bummed because it looked like there just wasn't going to be a, a day for this. And then I just happened to see that this was still, not only was this still November, it was the last day of November. And it was my usual Monday. I thought I was going to have to try and stream this on a special day or something, just whatever, to try and get this thing in. So glad I didn't have to do that. Now here, like I said, this is going to be a unique version of the pre-glaze here. This is going to be very unique. This has to be really thin here. If I want to get some layers over the top of this, this best be very thinly applied. Almost, again, it's as dry as I can make this. I'm just kind of scumbling that onto the surface here. And there's going to be a lot of clumsy moments with this thing. I, I warn you right now, there is going to be an awful lot of clumsy moments with this because just... And that this is the painting part of it. You can imagine trying to sculpt stuff and even more rigorous stuff than this. It was brutal. It was just absolutely brutal trying to get into all these areas. So if you see the brush just literally being blocked by a, another piece of the miniature, well, be ready for that pretty much all night long because that's what's going to happen. Hey, Nixel, how are you doing? And Zip Zap. Uh, zip zap this this thing is probably about half a pound of pewter it's entirely metal there is there is no holder well first of all if i put him on a holder he's going to be up there but yeah this this thing is probably at least two pounds of pewter something like that oh let's see not yeah, watching the stream with the wife uh, let's see. Hey, Big Jim Slade, how are you doing? Oh, folks, be sure to give Big Jim Slade a follow because he's been doing a, a charity stream all month long here, raising a whole bunch of money for the Boston Food Depository there, doing all kinds of fantastic charity-type work. You can catch... I know you can catch him on Sundays as well, doing Harlan's Heroes, a little bit online RPG. So definitely give Big Jim Slade... A big follow. We're just about there with some of this initial yellow stuff. Oh, no problem, big Jim Slade. Uh, let's see, Astrovox, I have to be careful how I painted that to keep from hurting myself. Well, yeah, this, like I said, even this big chunk of flame right here, that's metal. Two giant metal pieces for the body. The only thing that's not metal are the wings. The tail is metal. The legs are metal. The base is metal. Face is metal. Everything is metal. This is the old, this is one, this is the original kit right here. This is not the new plastic kit. Oh, look at what's happening now. What could that be? Could that be some kind of a fluorescent paint working its way into the mix there? Just might be. Oh, let's see. I was watching the Gandalf on Saturday while playing Shadowrun with Cat. That's right. You guys are doing the Shadowrun thing. I could hear sort of through the door in, uh, from the other room. I could hear some, some laughter and hilarity going on. Oh, fine, but I must go to sleep because it's 2 a.m. Oh, thanks, thanks, Vic. Thanks, Vicky. I appreciate that. Well, well this will be, it's going to be obviously a, a VOD for a couple of weeks, but it's also going to be a highlight too. And all of the highlights are permanent. So while we won't be able to do the interaction and stuff, at least you'll be able to get to see the process. You'll get to see the process here. Now, remember that is the, that's the fluorescent pretty much straight out of the tube there. Now it is it's mixed with some of the the white so it's cut down a little bit 
but that's one of the few colors that actually sort of almost almost kind of works that way not a lot of them do oh chromius uh, oh gosh that uh, because there was the green knight and then there was oh gosh what was she the maiden or the the lady what was what was she from the bretonians now i, I remember or was she the damsel or something like that what the heck was she well, you just you, you reminded me of that for a second, and then it just kind of, then it's kind of went out of my mind. Well, that's not too difficult to do these days. Fey Enchantress, thank you so much. Oh, no problem, Mick. The, so yeah, you can check out all the other ones too, like the Gandalf one that we did on Saturday. Uh, it's a vod right now, but it will be a highlight. I think I just uh, earlier today, I think I made a highlight out of the. Rohan cavalry painting of all the horses and such that we converted from riders of Rohan into royal guard. What else did we do? Oh yeah, then there was the the Easterlings, all of the sculpting that we did on Thursday, right? Hey rider, how are you doing? Uh Stila, I did. The container is empty, so we just had to go out of the tube here because there was no time to mix any new stuff. But of all the paints that can sort of work directly from the tube, the fluorescent ones are about as close as you're going to get. Besides, it's mostly being dry brushed on or it's being mixed with something else. So it's probably one of the few colors where you can sort of get away with that. And yes, this is going to be a very different version of our pre-glaze here. Hey, Cosplaying Kitten, how you doing? Uh, yep, Cosplaying Kitten, we do that all the time. Whenever, well, even when we're doing just small amounts of object source lighting like that. But this, uh, as you look at the, at the references here in the corner, you're way better because all of these wings, there's literally just fire inside the wings. And my choice would either be to go back in and repaint every last little bit of that with some kind of lighter yellow. Or we start with the lighter color and we just kind of go in reverse and we darken it. And it is, oh, it's so much faster. It really is. Especially when you've got something like this guy where he's sort of generating the glow himself. Uh, I, kind of playing kitten, did you see the spirit hosts that I painted a couple of weeks ago? It was during October. Well, it was more than a couple of weeks ago. Remember how those started out white? And then we put all the bluer colors on top of them. So yeah, that's a, that's a highlight from October. So if folks want to see that here, I'm not putting the white paint down first. We just have a some really, really, really light yellows here. And now we're mixing the fluorescent orange with some of our cadmiums here. Yeah, cosplaying kid, it is so much fun. Now, of course, it'll be more fun for you because you won't be painting an ancient, oh, probably 18-year-old solid pewter. I mean, this is this almost this entire thing is pewter. I imagine... Uh, was it is it Karn effects Karn? What is the what's one of the Forge World big bugs? Imagine one of those, and instead of being Forge World resin, it's entirely metal. That's what this thing is like. It is quite the beast. It is literally and figuratively a beast. Although I've been reading up on this, uh, actually, there's a there's a battle report on Zorpazorp. I think it's his newest one or one of his newer ones, and one of the guys in the battle report has a Balrog. He has that Balrog. Hey, Backlog Battles. Where did where'd that go? Speaking of fluorescent paint, look at that. There it is, magenta. Oh, let's see. I remember right, aren't the wings plastic? The wings are plastic, although there must have been a point where the wings weren't plastic. 
because I've had to assemble Dark Sword figures like this. See how the wing is in three pieces here? And those are all metal. So when I saw this, I went, oh my gosh, the wings are metal too. And then, then I was able to find the plastic pieces. But yeah, all of these other pieces, even the flames right here, those are all metal. Yeah, Blaker Dragon. Uh, see this orange that I'm using up in the corner there? That's also a fluorescent orange. That is from Marion Street. It's it's not, uh, well, even the acrylic fluorescents, you can't quite use those in a traditional way. Actually, I'm going to rechange, rechange. I'm going to switch the focus just a bit here to have it be, there we go. So that I can just keep this down here on the table because otherwise... That's just going to put a whole lot of extra stress on that base that we do not need. We don't need the extra stress on that. So what I tried to do on the base was to build that up with a bunch of extra pins, extra scopey around one of his, well, both feet, just to try and brace that so that the pin wouldn't maybe come loose and start spinning around to do any kind of weird stuff like that. So I'm already, wow. That's a first, having to put more cadmium yellow out on the palette. That's never happened before. Now, of course, if he was Puff the Purple Dragon or something like that, I could have used the magenta and the Egyptian violet on him. That would have been, uh, that would be the, the Balrog's uh, less tough cousin, Puff, Puff the Purple Balrog. Let's see, they still haven't picked up the Scions and Dark Elves. I'm not sure why. I'm going to call them tomorrow. The number of cases in my area can no longer go out. Any, oh, sorry to hear that backlog. I mean, it's uh, uh, it, it's okay. We, we know that they're, we know that they'll be coming. And, and hopefully they, well, uh, just uh, just for the fun of it, I, I, was hope, I hope they get here at least sometime in December because, well, that with that winter theme, right? That I want to do on the the dark elves there. That would go perfect. Oh, speaking of winter theme, so we made a decision here. So the elf army here. Actually, I'm, I'm going to change that. I think I might not do the red cloaks, but this is going to be a winter theme. The the Galadriels are going to be winter theme because in an old white dwarf article from 2006, one of the guys that developed the Lord of the Rings stuff for GW. He did this whole long article about all of these other, these lost kingdoms of Arnor before there was a Witch King. And then kind of how the Witch King sort of corrupted some of those. But there's all these specters and spooks and everything else. And I th and, and wargs even, like spectral wargs and all this stuff. And I thought, what about basically like snow wargs and, and snow owl and uh, all of these crazy spectral guys, uh, like an alternate color scheme for some Army of the Dead guys, uh, taking the Numenorians, because I'm never going to make a first stage army out of those, but I could take those and turn them into specters and all these other crazy critters that he created. So I think you can see that's really starting to get more of an orange feel to it. Yeah, Nixel, I think, uh, I think actually, yeah, that talk about getting buff while you paint. This thing, oh, man, oh, he weighs, he weighs a ton. Because I, I shipped off a box today of just some plastic figs and one metal figure, and it weighed something like 10 ounces. I'm thinking if that weighed 10 ounces, this base weighs more than 10 ounces. Hey, Ozzy, how you doing? Oh, let's see, you still might have to... Actually, well, uh, fortunately, I still have... Uh, I still do my usual running exercise. There's a... Uh, you strap 10 pounds of iron bars onto each arm and run for a couple of miles there. And then there's... Uh, you take 20 pound weights, you put those on your legs, and then I do, was it, 440 reps with the 20 pound weights on each leg. That is a lot of iron. 
So I guess I should say I'm used to I'm used to walking around with carrying lots of metal. I guess that makes me a heavy metal painter. Yes, and folks, be sure to check out the Armored Wolf Etsy page. Some fantastic dice bags. Some amazing dice. I know I just, uh, the last Nurgle bag that I saw, and then uh, the Necron bag were just fantastical. Not Nurgle Death Guard, there you go. And here you can see we're taking that fluorescent orange. We're mixing it with our cadmium yellow, letting that spread out here. Because the further we go out in the wings, we don't want the flame to be quite as bright, obviously, as it is going to be in that core, that central core. Now what I might do, if I can maybe get the plastic one, maybe we create the... The the scene was that that wasn't Kirith Ungol. No, Kirith Ungol, that was that was around Shelob's lair there. But the the battle at on the what is that the on the the lid of the world or whatever? Of Gandalf and the Balrog, maybe maybe we do that little diorama, because everybody does the Moria stuff. We we've seen the Moria stuff plenty of times. Alright, here's where things here's where things are gonna get interesting. Just gonna throw these here. There's a, even some additional padding right here. And don't mind me, while I just shove a whole bunch of paint onto these wings here. Well, a whole bunch of paint is relative. It's very little paint. As always with oils, you want less, right? Less is more, and more is way too much. But the process, at least in these early stages, is gonna, gonna be a uh, somewhat vigorous to say the least. Uh, let me see. Now, the Hunu Jim was actually Sam Lens the whole time. Well, we just uh, we we're just changelings. We just every so often, we just kind of like a change into the other person, and we do a broadcast as them. Just just for entertaining ourselves, of course. The old cosplaying kitten, I, I saw the tree, and I saw that, well, of course, which cat does not love a tree? So that was really nifty. We were able to get that tree set up. We, huh, that's, that's the first time, I believe, I set up a tree. Actually, this was before Thanksgiving, and there's never been a tree set up in this house before December. There has never been a tree set up in this house before December, so that set some kind of a record for Wappleville. Earliest tree ever. Uh, in two weeks, they're going to release four new sets of Warcry dice. Oh. Oh, Cromnius, yeah. We, uh, we have a thing here where there's only one Robin. We just see the same Robin everywhere. Every time we look around and we see a robin, we know that's just one robin. There's not a bunch of them. There's just the one. There, there are no additional robins, just that one. And we just see them over and over again in different areas. Uh, see what's starting to happen here? We're starting to walk a little bit more of that fluorescent orange now. It's starting to get a little bit darker. Again, I'm kind of... My my brush is sort of mashing into everything, getting in the way. Uh, I set up uh, November 1st. Outsider Miniatures, that was exactly, because someone asked me, they said, wait a minute, Jim, you're the, you're the same person who has more than once set up a Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Why all of a sudden, what's with November, what's with Thanksgiving? This is This is unheard of, and that was exactly the reason why. To just try and well get get a little more enjoyment out of it. Why the heck not? All right, I'm gonna get even more of the orange in here. Let's just do more orange. We'll do some of that over here too. So I think you can you can see how we're starting to build this up. Because I'd like to have all that that sort of 
crackling lava ish nash is ish stuff here in the in the wings too. Well, if we can manage it. Hopefully we can. We also have a whole bunch of our our what we what we say call them our homemade filbert brushes, right? We got a bunch of those at the ready. Okay, sculpting all that stuff, that was the sculpting of it. Like, the shapes themselves were just laughably easy. They were criminally, insanely difficult to try and reach, though. So, there was that. Hey, Dragon Eye, how you doing? And my Minicraft, how you guys doing? And Sinstar. Sinstar, welcome back. I am really, really glad that it worked out that I can actually sit here and do paint the Balrog in November. Conclude the month of Shadow and Flame with Shadow and Flame. Now I'm starting to mix in. Uh, see, we're starting to work in some of our Cadmium Scarlet. Cadmium Scarlet getting in here now. Ah, uh, look at that. See, it's already starting to kind of mesh these two things together. Ah, uh, look at that. Got to work from the inside out here. Since there are promises only two questions tonight, and the answer for both of them is going to be Kraken. Yes, the answer for all questions tonight will be Kraken. Because we just got some. So... Uh-huh. Ah, uh, see that? Look at that. Look what's starting to happen there. Look what's starting to happen to that. I tell you, uh, the the key sometimes to the object source lighting is not necessarily the... I mean, as much as your focus may be on that, that fluorescent stuff, the cadmiums, uh, what they can do... Impressive. Now we start to work in a little bit of that, that darker orange in the, in the here. That's, again, our cadmium scarlet. And the nice thing is that we're not getting any kind of nasty dry brush effects here. Because it's oils, so no dry brush. And I'm really glad I sculpted in the extra fire there, too. Hey, Nessie, how are you doing? Uh, let's see, Nixa, do you prefer autonomy or if people give you direction? Oh, uh, Nixa, of course, you just get used to most likely having to paint hideous figures and even more hideous color schemes. I, I don't mind. It, it's kind of fun. Now, when you do the... The stuff for miniature companies, a lot of times you have to match concept art. And there is there is an entertainment value to matching concept art. So there there's kind of an entertainment there. Now this is now this is one where someone wants the Knights of Casterly Rock and each one of them in their own heraldry. And I didn't even know that the Lannister guys had sub families or sub whatever, sub kingdoms in there. So that's uh, that was it's an interesting thing doing all four of these guys, each one in their own heraldry. So that's that's a another interesting project right there where they say, look, it has to look like this. But that was that was kind of interesting as opposed to just say painting the same Knights of Castle Rock again. So that was pretty fun. Uh, I'm glad that you're doing well there, Nessie. I hope that uh, now is the unit of Baratheon Heavy Cav. Is that now finished? Because I've seen at least two of the horses, I think. Maybe three? I could swear I've seen a couple of them now. Oh, let me see. Huh, Sinstar is going to call me to keep the tally for Sinstar on the question there. I wish I kept closer to the book description of the Balrog, but at the same time, I'm glad he didn't. I hadn't considered doing the colors of Vast. Yeah, that's uh, there's all, f and I'm I'm doing basically Patreon videos on the. Four I might do a, a Twitch session on on one of them, 
because, well, guess guess what December is. What's December? Nessie knows exactly what December is. He can tell you what it is. Yeah, it's winter is coming. It's one of the reasons why I'm going with winter elves for my Lord of the Rings Galadrium army. Uh, two down. I'm working on the other two now that I have a better idea. Ah, uh, yeah, and Nessie knows winter is coming. Winter is coming, and I'm so glad I extra added the extra fire. That's just with that Liquitex Heavy Gel. You've seen me use it for water. You've seen me use it for, oh gosh, what else besides just the water? You've seen me do it, use it for a bunch of different things. Uh, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Yeah, the... I, as I was looking at this, oh, and uh, they've they've done another one. The new one has a whip, and it has a second set of horns. It has a whip and a second set of horns. I don't know if that's closer to the book. Well, having a whip is certainly closer to the book. I think at the time they had no way to do that. When this kit came out 20 years ago, I don't think they had any possible way of making the whip. So I think they just kind of. Well, fudged it and gave him... Well, he did have a sword. He did have a sword. Maybe the maybe there was a Forge World upgrade of this thing that came with a, with the uh, whip or something like that. Nah, Cromnius. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, what did, it started in October, right? Because we had, we had Sporktober. Yeah, we had Sporktober. And that was kind of fun because it sort of gave people maybe an idea of what might be coming up. We tried to make things fit. And then I, I knew December just, well, it has to be winter is coming. I have a ton of Song of Ice and Fire stuff. And there's other winter-themed stuff that I was going to paint. Uh, I think January is going to have a little different take on it. There's actually going to be some jungle in January. Could be the January jungle because there's that Mears Miniatures Lizard Man army that has to be painted. Since there's question number one, went to mix up some paint, did burnt umber first, made it a bit too thin. Uh, then I did Thalo Blue, now my brush is. So it's, uh, oh, uh... so what you're gonna. Now it depends, I guess, which cleaner that she used. When I'm doing the, the mixing of the paints, I tend to just kind of stick with a different brush for each one. What you can also do is you clean them with the brush cleaner. And if you really need to clean them out and clean them deep, you could also use some rubbing alcohol to, to clean those even deeper. Or you could even get some, some dish soap because linseed oil, right? Dish soap, dish soap, dish, dish soap should cut through the linseed and safflower oils. But also, too, uh, a couple of those colors right there, those are some pretty beefy colors. So that's not a surprise. Ah, look, what, look what's happening here. Look at that. See how that's starting to change. Doesn't look quite so ra drastically just one than the other. Now we're starting to get a little bit of our flamey stuff. And look at how much of that it's picked up, though. Uh, yeah, the whip was in the way. So basically, he brought out the whip, right? Because uh, Gandalf, his the guy, uh, the Balrog's sword shatters, right? When it hits Gandalf's sword, at least I seem to remember that. At least in the movie, could be wrong. Uh, disc so and cleaner. Oh, I just I just use the seventy percent for for cleaning brushes. Yeah, I just use the seventy. Uh, it's interesting that you still can't find the ninety anywhere, because there there was a point where all of a sudden I was able to get ninety again. Now, of course, maybe maybe that's changed once again with all of the renewed stuff going on but that's what I that's why I started getting that Windsor Newton brush cleaner because 
I, I used to just use rubbing alcohol. I used to just use that to clean my brushes, even my acrylic stuff. I would just use that. Ah, this is so much easier. Is this a number 10? No, that's the number 8. So the Royal Langnickel on their rounds, they are a little bit bigger than your your original one true brush. Like there's multiple one true brushes. Ah, the 90 is for drinking. As Loim says uh, also in the book, when he clashes with Glam during his sword break. Okay. So I guess, uh, Loim, weren't we... Didn't we have a discussion about how the definition of a Balrog changed because, oh gosh, was it Gondolin, the secret city? When that gets discovered, it's attacked by an army of Balrogs. There was, what, seven of them there? And, of course, the leader of them was Gothmog, who was not some scarred orc spitting on pieces of Gondor stuff that was thrown through a catapult, or a trebuchet, sorry. And that, that led me to go, oh, okay, wait a second. What, what's going on here? We got different sized. Wait a minute, I thought there was only one Balrog. And his name wasn't Gothmog. See, we're just going to dust in. A little bit darker, a little bit darker here. And it's all of a sudden doesn't look quite so yellow anymore. It's starting to look a bit more orange. And the closer to the end of the wings that we get, the more orange it's going to be. And that is the, the critical color there, the cadmium scarlet, which is just every bit as important as that fluorescent orange. Might even be slightly more important, actually. Uh, in the book, he's much smaller. Uh, downward store rubbing alcohol. Uh, yeah, so the... Because I know the, a lot of the 3D printing guys, they, they had to get very creative. Well, they had to get really creative with what they were going to use because, well, 90% just wasn't there anymore. It's one of the reasons why my 3D printing... There's been many reasons why there's been some some pauses on that, but certainly that whole idea of the can't get the 90%. As those start to darken, this is going to look that much brighter. Believe it or not, it, well, what is it? If you want to have light, you must have dark. Starting to work our way toward that. And this looks really light here. This color is pretty dark, actually. Believe it or not. Uh, Vlager will be sad that it didn't get magented. Well, when we if we get a plastic one, then we can make him we can make him what was he what was he gonna be called? Oh Puff the purple bow rug. And he can have all the purple he wants. Now let's see, uh, when's the last magenta object source lighting that I did? Well, there's going to be a ton of magenta object source lighting soon on the, oh gosh, what the heck are they? The Lumineth. Yes, Lumineth are going to be illuminated by magenta light. Because I don't know if I've ever done any kind of an army type of a thing that has magenta on it. Do we have a bit squeak starting with Trasharama? So Trash, how are you doing? How are you doing? We're just we're getting we're we're just warming up here with the Balrog. We're just getting warmed up with the Balrog here. Getting some hot stuff working on him. Uh, we, we may have to go back into some of these locales here to try and darken some things up a little bit more, or lighten some things up, but as you can see, this is not exactly rocket science right here. Not exactly rocket science, and because 
This is relatively dry, not lots of liquid in it. You can see that the paint's not slipping and sliding all over the place. Black Dragon just touched up some of the hottest pink on a miniature. Actually, oh gosh. Now, of course, I think Kathy has the magenta one, but if you're doing acrylics, th these right here, I mean, look at that. Yeah, you can look how it's making the camera go boing. Now, Lime says Tolkien was really bad at reusing names. There was a Glorfindel there and one in the Fellowship. Yes, that was confusing me too. Uh, there was also Gothmog who was present at the. Oh, there was. Okay. Yeah, see, that is. And that's the thing. Was Gothmog. Was he a Nazgul? Was he a Balrog? What, what, what was he? Heck, I've even seen debates on. You know, is there an afterlife for orcs? Are all orcs evil? Now, what is it? We'll keep working in some of these lighter colors. Then we're going to have to work in the darks, but... See, even there, the... the boy, these uh, these interior bits here, they're really going to start to just come popping out of this. Okay, I'm going to get me a little bit more of the fluorescent here so I'm glad I didn't go all the way to the edge of the base because not so much of that paint is coming off on me oh oh the oh that hottest pink okay yeah because uh believe it or not that will trumpet as the hottest pink like look at like you know just making a camera go bonkers oh, let's see so trash I hope that you're doing well uh yeah, what what he was was never special. Hey, Pat draws. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Matt, thank you so much for that file here. Let me see. That's, of course, covered right now by my control. Hey, Nidus, thank you so much. And guess who else thanks you? Gandalf does. He says, hello, little hobbit. There's going to be more pup. There's even more puppet shows now. Just think of that. And he's like, woof. You know what? That's a job for my big brother, Schmandoff. Yeah. Schmandoff's going to come in and he's like, Huh, Balrog, time to put that guy out. Shh. There we go. Yeah, Schmandoff, the not gray. Otherwise known as uh, not Schmandoff, the gray. That there's your, yeah, that's Gandalf right there. All right, now we've got some of our fluorescent orange and I'm just gonna do the same thing here where we just kind of set this down some of the paint will get wiped away but is what it is to be able to work this kinda have to uh, fudge a few things it'll be some creative destruction hello little hobbits spark my ganja well, thank you so much evil one for that follow uh -huh. Gandalf says Thank you. Ha <laughs> that's going to be really fun doing that. It's going to drive people nuts. Well, what was the other thing that we wanted to... Oh, yeah. Getting some of that orange down here. Oh, this is... It's, it's so nice being able to blend this here. Because otherwise... This would all have that nasty dry brush look to it. I'm able to you can see how it's lightening up there on the end of that brush. And yet we are using the successor to the one true brush Hello, here. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. I'll catch you later there, Dino Titan Edition. Thanks for joining us. And thank you so much for that follow, Idarak. I appreciate that. And uh, so does Gandalf. So, oh yeah, that's right. So the, the decision is for the elves, they're going to have a winter theme because they're going to be fighting all kinds of crazy spooks and specters and wintry things. Snow trolls? Yeah, how's about that? Snow trolls. They'll just be, well, regular trolls, but they'll be snowy trolls. How does that sound? That ought to be very fun. I'm just going to need a touch of thinner here. 
because I just realized we got to get some more action on that sore. We got to get some more action on his arm right here. And that's just going to have to be some paint shoved right in there. Just shove that paint in there. If I need to go lighter, I can actually do a little bit of a glaze of my lighter color. Remember, we've done that for some of the other fiery type things. Oh, and there's a link to your One True Brush Descendants. And like I said, once we start doing a little bit more of the finer dry brushing things, well, it's the not dry brush, dry brush. Once we get to some of the finer versions of that, we will we'll break out those homemade filberts and do that. Again, just trying to work some of these darker oranges out here. Yeah, and with each permutation of this, it just starts to come together a little bit more and a little bit more. There might be areas where I have to just kind of take away some of the lighting, or it just maybe it's a little bit too much. And all of a sudden, the, the shape just doesn't read anymore. We still got the underside of these wings to do here. And actually the underside of some of the flame there. So there's there's going to be some clumsy moments with this thing, but uh, the different ways to dry brush and not dry brush. It's like Gandalf and not Gandalf. But uh, thanks again, Dino Titan Edition. I, like, I always appreciate <coughs> when folks can join us, especially our friends from across the pond. Oh, look at that as it gets just, uh, oh, yeah. Look at all that starting to show up there. Mm-hmm. It's just nifty that this is, it's not a dry brush. That's what I love about it so much. It's mixing the entire time. And it's crazy how light this color looks. I mean, look at it on the palette. Look at how dark that thing is on the palette. Look at how light it seems here. It's the, the wonder of the cadmium scarlet. All right, I'm going to set that down. I'm actually going to need some more of just my regular old cadmium yellow out here. Hey, look at this. We got Zeltaris in the house. So, folks, we already have Big Jim Slade here. I told you about Pyro Club. I told you about Zenelo's project. Well, there's your, there is your main protagonist on those things. That is Zeltaris. You need to go follow Zeltaris for all things involving role-playing. And also, uh, well, while you're at it, follow Just Dices too. Uh, except you're probably already following, well, Just Dices and Zeltaris. But if you're not, you know you should. If you like your role-playing and you like dragony things, they just kind of go poof. Yes, uh, actually, speaking of Big Jim Slade, when when exactly does that hair turn teal colored on him? Because you you already did yours, you already you already had to uh, suffer your color change there. When does Big Jim Slade have to do the same thing? Because he was very successful in his fundraising goal. Actually, I think that that hair color thing, actually, N uh, Nixel, who was it? Was it Nixel that put him through? Or was it, uh, uh, who was it that put him over the top for the, for the hair? Uh -huh. Always going to go green. Well, that's, that is definitely ecologically uh, safe right there. Yeah, that that's a little bit more. That's uh, really, if it's for a charity thing, the color should be ecologically safe and make it green. Then, then he would uh, be able to say that his head is an elven instead of an elven cloak. He has an elven hat, and just his just his head is invisible. You can see the rest of his body, 
but you can't see his head. That ah, oh, that's why he did that. Okay, he wanted to have. He just wanted his head to be invisible. Ah, so Nixel. Oh, Nixel did it too. Okay, I thought so. So, folks, yes, the two culprits there. Sunday night Harlan's Heroes, Friday night Pyro Club. And uh, but Thursday night is the big, uh, the DM discussion where people and then there's some open Q and A also in that I believe. So if folks are curious about what does it actually take to run a proper game of RPG, you're gonna have a lot of talent there. Wait, how can Mike Disney enter our domain? He's already here. Yeah, Mike Disney's already here. Where is he? He's skulking around here somewhere. Mike Disney's skulking around he's somewhere. He's skulking around. Where is he? There he is. That's Mike Disney. See, that's what he looks like. He's like, whoa, what's that? What is what is that down there? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. He's just gonna stay warm by the fire here. He's like, yeah, that's very toasty right there. Say, Mike, how are you doing? And folks, be sure to give Mike Disney a follow. <laughs> Valley Dweller, yeah, see, that's that is our resident Mike Disney, who is actually the the real Mike Disney. He's the real Mike Disney. Yeah, the the Mike Disney you see on his face camera that that's just a stunt double right there. That's not the actual Mike Disney. Uh, so how are you doing there? And Megan, how are you doing? And Miss Half Damage. Oh, Miss Half Damage, I've been seeing some of the stuff on Instagram. That is looking really fantastic. So uh, salute on all the nifty miniatures that you're painting. We are working here on a figure that is eight, at least 18 years old. It could be 19 years old. It's almost solid metal, except for the wings. And we're just, we're obviously doing our lighting effects on there. Then we got Kui's in the house. Yes, we, we uh, for some reason, we just let anybody in here. So this little instruction thing right here, you can see even the, the flames on top of his back, those are metal. However, we plus those, we actually made some more flames we added more to that. We added more to him because you can see there's multi layers of flames here. Now, hey, Dr. Faust, how are you doing? Oh, let's see. Yes, yes, she's definitely been killing it on the Instagram. Definitely killing it on the Instagram. So what we're we've been doing now, we started out this thing was virtually this color, like a yellowish, right? See that little bit on the sponge right there? It was a yellowish white. That's what we began with. And you can see we're just kind of moving along here, darkening some things down, changing things. Hey, Orchrist, how are you doing? Now, Orchrist, those are uh, Patreon videos right there. So I, I uh, if you're on the Patreon page there they're just in the general techniques section it's a very simple process I mean it really it can't be much more simple than you know let's not have that in there it's a blister pack you squeeze your paint in there you put your thinner in there and you just keep mixing until it's the consistency of miniature paint then you throw it in your bottle and you use something for an agitator now for me because also, in addition to blister packs, I have lots of metal chunks laying around. I throw one of these in there, and that acts as an agitator. And you can kind of hear that sound right there. That is the agitator in that jar. Hey, Hutch Studio, how are you doing? Uh, or Chris, sometimes you have to just go literally take a brush full at a time and kind of dump that down in the container. If it's a little bit thinner, like so, let's say it's a phthalo color, sometimes you are fortunate enough that you can almost pour it into the container, especially if you're using a soft container. Ah, oh, what was it that someone suggested? Oh, uh, like uh, medicine cups. That's what someone suggested. 
Ah, okay. Yeah, the Orcrest, I guess uh, I always said, you know, stainless steel, but some folks said, well, now the, those are probably definitely a, a legit stainless steel. Folks, they, they told me, said, you know, sometimes on Amazon, it might say stainless steel. Uh, they just said go with glass beads just to be sure. But if you got them from 75, they should definitely be, they should be the real deal. So that shouldn't be a problem. Hey, acid burn punk. How uh, you do That's why hema hematite beads. Now we'll just we'll start to work in some of that darker. So I'm going to make sure that on the underside here we have as much of that taken care of as we can. So we we have advanced it here. We're going to advance it even a little bit more. And as light as this looks, it's actually just a very dark color. That cadmium scarlet is a dark color. Ah, so the hematite will be cheaper than glass. I, for me, I will never be researching any of those things because I have enough. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Hey there, Rickle Pick. Thank you so much for that follow. Uh, Gandalf will say thank you in a minute. But right now, we got ourselves a handful of Balrog. That doesn't sound weird at all out of context. So look around here, and there is Gandalf saying, uh, "Thank you for the follow." Mm, do you have some ganja? Who's got ganja? Oh, he's gonna spark. That's who's gonna spark the ganja. It's gonna be the Balrog. That's it. So that's how that works. Now, so Valley Dweller, it's going to be, yeah, it's gonna be kind of an inside-out glow. So it's going to be definitely... Oh, look, we got this one over here. So it's going to be more like that one right there. We did this one, actually. Uh, we did that one during Sporktober, didn't we? Yes, we did. And that was towards the end of it. It actually started out very, very bright. So see this color over here? See this? That's what it actually started out. That was our first layer right there. Yeah, Bethany, this should definitely keep... Uh, keep things warm that's for sure I mean technically it's really not object source lighting either because he is the source of the light right so folks just uh, so people know this is just after an hour that's that's all we've been doing here just for an hour now we've been able to get all kinds of really fun color changes into this in just an hour's time We've been able to build up a lot, and this guy, remember, he is a massive chunk of pewter. The, the wings are plastic. It almost doesn't matter because they're so spread out that it almost negates the fact that they are plastic wings. Speaking of which, I need to get some darker stuff over here because there was just no paint there at all. Some of the little cut marks in his arms there. We will also maybe lighten up some of those. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, Rickle Pick, how are you doing? So this is uh, it's a combination of several types. We even have some of the old Winton starter set here. So you have Windsor Newton. You have some Gamlins. Actually, our are two cadmiums they are from Gamlin we also have some Williamsburg action too let's see we've got oh asphaltum there but here's some of our Williamsburg brilliant yellow pale our fanchion red those are from Williamsburg we also have some fluorescent paints from Marion Street hey Reiner how are you doing So, Reiner, I hope that all is well. And uh, <laughs> that was really hilarious when you raided uh, Kathy's podcast because... Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Huh? Thank you so much, Valley Dweller, for the follow. We'll, we'll get you a little Gandalf appearance, too, in just a sec because, uh, like we said before, 
We done got ourselves a handful of Balrog right now. That doesn't sound dirty at all. We're just going to get us again some more darks here. We're going to just keep doing this. We might pick out a few of these as lighter spots later on, but we are just kind of getting started in the process. Now, since dirt, like, uh, just like Loim said, not a wet palette. What it is is a piece of cardboard and a piece of parchment paper. This is actually the same parchment paper that I use for my wet palette, but piece of cardboard, you can see some of the glue residue here. Just take a glue stick, right? Glue this on here. When we are done, we just pull that off. And again, it's just a just a piece of cardboard right there. I'll catch you later, Dragon Eye. Oh geez, Dragon Eye. Yeah, we're gonna be what it's it's 749, baby. <laughs> Nobody goes to sleep until everything's done. So Balrog's got to be done before anybody goes to sleep. So you guys have some hours yet to go. Cause we don't do any little one or two or three or four or five hour streams here. We do some uh, nice long streams. Uh, it's part of period. It's terrible. Yeah, since this is actually it's a decent. Uh, we got it off of Amazon. I don't really know what kind it is, but it's it's sort of a high high quality sort of baking uh, whatever, and it's worked really really well. Actually, I should probably get me some more of it just in case they've they don't. They might run out of it or something with everybody baking so much now. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Reiner, it was really wild. I think they had uh, something like 80 people when they were done, and that is very much a first, so that was really cool and much appreciated. There. And this is obviously, this is the opposite of, say, something like a more traditional object source lighting. Like, well, actually, no, see, here's a, this is a little bit of interior generated light. Different color, but same kind of concept here. Yeah. Uh, why oil paints over regular miniature paints? Uh, and I have to always remember to say Rickle Pick instead of Pickle Rick. So I apologize if I fumble on that. So Rick will pick the, well, the oil paints for one thing, they're actually, they're more durable because, I mean, that's why they used to paint buildings and houses and everything with oils instead of with acrylics. They are intensely more brilliant. I mean, they are, there's no comparison actually because when you compare that to say something like this, so that's actually done with fluorescent acrylic paints, and then you haul out something like this, and and one just literally looks like it's actually on fire. It's also really easy to do a lot of quick, smooth blends. You can go back and watch. All of these things are saved as highlights. So go back and watch the highlights of these. These sword blades took about two or three minutes to do with the oils. This took a matter of seconds right here. And let's see, we've got some other fun things that'll, ah, even just these bases right here. Uh, these bases took no time at all to do with the oils because it's not just the, the mixing. It, it's, the, it's not just the blending. It's the fact that the colors are just more intense. You can do just so much more with them. We used them on our Rohan Royal Guard right here. And right here you get things like horses. So much easier to paint with these. Uh, let's see, I've got some videos wrought that didn't make some high clips out of and I was set. Uh, so basically you have to go in and you have to make a highlight. You have to go in, make that highlight. Once you make that highlight, it is permanent. And it can be your entire session. I just wish I knew that from the get-go. If I had known that from the very beginning, I would have way more highlights. Uh, just order, yep, Nixel, that is, uh, 
I just sent off one today. And guess what? It was chock full of toilet paper. Oh, let's see. But now I like that skeleton dude. I need to see if I can find that session. Uh, Bethany, that was from October, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, look for Sp uh, Sporktober. That should be... It's either September or October. It's one of those two months. My guess is October, though. Let's see. It. Yeah, Outsider Miniatures, that's why we ordered it on Amazon. Because, and that was months ago. We, we couldn't find parchment paper. It was like, what the heck's going on here? Oh, let's see. I think that covers it. Yeah. I think that covers the chats and the questions and the stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. I thought I had to get caught up somewhere, so we're just going to have to literally hold this guy upside down. It's almost like some kind of weird water torture there for our bow rug. As we continue to darken up the edges on this here. Now, the other thing, too, is when I'm working on my stuff, I am working on, oh gosh, hundreds and hundreds of figures at the same time. And, well, the oils are also cheaper <laughs> because you use way less paint. It lasts, it goes so much farther. We use, oh yes, that's right. We call these pieces of eight because these are eight dollars a piece. You could get everything that you need. I got enough stuff to last me four years of oil painting for the cost of five of these guys. Brushes, sponges, palette, thinner, oils, the whole thing. Cost as much as five jars of contrast paint, which GW hopes only lasts you like a day. <laughs> so that was another reason why oils just are a much handier thing for me. So you got the, you got the durability, you have that that ability to mix. You've got the mixability, you've got the really intense coloration, so much more. I was shocked. I didn't even think I, I knew there would be a difference, but I didn't think there was going to be that much of a difference. So I was really 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 shocked when I saw that difference. Yes, especially when you knock one over. And I think I told you the story of that M18 Hellcat that I dropped on the floor. And and that's metal and resin. So that, that's, that was not exactly like a little light plastic kit just bouncing off the carpet there. That had some... That thing took a shot. <clears throat> and there was nothing, uh, nothing wrong with it after it took its uh, little trip down to the floor. I wish oils were that cheap in Canada. Yeah, Orcris Gaming, I... Like I said, I've... Different areas are going to be different things because... Obviously here, that the starter set was $20. Now, I know in Australia, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of extra costs for shipping anything there. Let's see. So yeah, the the highlights are forever. You just have to go in and physically make them highlights. They don't they don't do it by themselves. They they will not do that by themselves. You have to specifically go in there and create the highlight. Now of course when I do a highlight, it's got a thumbnail, it has its title, it has a synopsis, it has all the stuff, all the information. It's it's basically like it's its own YouTube video. So let's go. Maybe our next level darker. I think we've gotten it to the point where we can go another level darker here. And we'll start to focus more on the body as we do this. Now we've got our fanchion red here. And I'm going to just brown that up a little bit with our... Now let's get a little of that cadmium scarlet in here. And we want this to be on the drier side as well. 
So yeah, that latest Dark Sword video, that put the total of videos for November Patreon videos at 11. And at uh, average of about two and a half-ish hours, about two and a quarter hours apiece, well, at somewhere in the neighborhood of 25, 26 hours of, of brand new videos just in November. And that's just kind of a typical month. So if, if you uh, have Netflixed and binged everything there and you want something else to binge on, maybe that might be something. Now, as we get darker on those, and we sculpted those, those don't exist. Yeah, that, that stuff that I sculpted on there, that, that didn't exist. You can see it's already starting to look, starting to get more and more bold here with each level that we do, but it has to be as little paint as possible. That is a key with the oils. Less is more. Well, who is going to fight the Balrog? Someone has just declared they want the host with the most ride to ruin and the world's ending. Yes, that's your Rohan there. There's an off. Speaking of which, there is a ton of Rohan painting here on the channel. Lots of Lord of the Rings just in general. And, oh, actually, those Royal Guard that you saw, we talked about how those were conversions. Let's show you what they looked like before they had any paint on them. So every Thursday here, we call it the conversion corner. And I take my miniatures that I need, like these right here. Instead of spending 23 24 bucks a piece for metal Royal Guard figures, I just took four or five dollar Rohan riders and we turn them into Royal Guard. And once they are painted, I think I got the right scene here. Yeah, once they're painted, well, yeah, you wouldn't really realize those are just plastic riders. That banner, all the freehand, all that stuff was painted on stream. So just go back, look for those highlights. And let me see if I can find some of my other conversions here. So we just did these. One second. Those aren't my conversions. Here's my conversions. One second here. So there is our Amder Master of Blades. And there is our War Priest. So we just did this last Thursday. Just did that last Thursday. And of course, our Dragon Knight here. So you can go back and watch that. That was just this last Thursday. Thursday before last, we were working on our Candish Chariots. Uh, let's see, some of the tubes put on there are uh, forty, sixty dollars a tube. Ah, that's what Christmas is for. That's what Christmas is for. Now those uh, those Senele, uh gosh paints or gauche paint or whatever, those are they're on the way because of Damiel's uh, kind donation there. So and there's some more quad zero brushes as well, just because you can never have too many quad zeros which we'll probably be using some of those or one of those here on this as well. Yeah, the other thing, uh, Valley Dweller, that I like to use is the, the epoxy sculpt. So it, it's kind of starting out with these conversions, but eventually, too, I want to be doing some regular sculpting, just sculpting some busts, whatever, almost like portrait-style busts. Now that and a war cry dice bag, of course, and and, and a oh, instead of a partridge, what are the what are the murder chickens called for war cry? Raptors and a raptorix in a pear tree. Something like that. I'm gonna let myself get a little bit more of the. I almost, almost thought that was the asphaltum. No, that is our quinacrinome. Quinacrinome golden brown. Now, at a certain point, I mean, we, 
the oils are just going to say, well, okay, that, that's enough paint right there for now. You might have to just let that sit there for a little bit, 15, 20 minutes, an hour. Then you'll be able to get yourself some more paint there. Also, thin over thick, right, and reverse. Thick paint sticks to thinner paint and vice versa. Starting to get some darker stuff going on here in his face. Again, using that as kind of our homemade filbert brush. Hey, we got a Drew in the house. How are you doing that? Or how are you doing? I saw your Instagram. So, folks, definitely give Thunderdome Drew a follow and check out his war grips for holding miniatures, obviously. Getting a grip on your miniatures. And those were looking really fantastic. I saw you, you had about five or six posts worth of uh, stuff there. So those were looking really sensational. Some darker orange and orange brown into here now. But you see how it's starting to pick up that lighter color on the brush? I gotta go back. I gotta get some fresh paint here. Hey Roger, how you doing? Darken this up a bit and uh, eventually some of those scale pieces, whatever you want to call them. Those are just going to have to be painted individually. So, Roger, I hope that the the week is off to an okay start, that Monday didn't have too much Monday to it. Because sometimes Mondays have a little more Monday than you'd really like to see. Turn you around. Let's get to get to the back here and start hitting some of these again some of these scales here the ones that we the ones that we sculpted on here all bunch of these that's why I put them on there so I could actually make some of those a little bit darker here uh, have you made your list out for what you want for Wumpa Must this year well I definitely have not done that uh, there, there's a, well, the, the, the list is definitely starting to coalesce, and it's coalescing around a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff, that's for sure. I mean, heck, there's, there's terrain files that I would like. I'd also like to have a, a printer that was more plug-and-play and less plug-and-pray, but there's that. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely, there is some, now, of course, the Lord of the Rings stuff is a little bit tougher because, well, yeah, the new stuff is neat, but a lot of the older things that you actually need, I look at the web store and there's not a lot of it there, especially when it comes to things like Far Harad, sadly. I've been trying to actually look at, the, at some of the Reaper Bones stuff to see if there's some orcs that I could convert into half trolls for Harad. I don't know. Because I can't really quite tell how big some of the Reaper ones are. One way to make a brush like this even bigger is to just turn it over on its side. So all of a sudden, instead of maybe about a three-eighths of an inch brush, all of a sudden when you do this, it's almost like a one-inch brush. And we'll just kind of do that right here. We'll just hold it over on its side. And we'll just dust this right over the top here. Uh, I suppose trash, it could be like a, a hundred quadruple zero brushes or something like that. That could be good, but brush-wise, we're pretty well set here. Uh, we got several sets of our descendants of the one true brush now in the house. So pretty much uh, outside of the quadruple zeros, that it's always good to have a good supply of those. Darken down these wings a little bit more, especially the closer we get out to the edges here. Less and less of the orange. The 
and at one point it almost becomes I don't even describe it it's where you've you've gotten so much of this sort of mid-range dark in there that some of the layers don't look like they're doing all that much until you really get to those much darker layers because as dark as this is it's nowhere near as dark as our we can go we have a long ways we can go we can really darken this down a whole bunch more now of course that quinacridone golden brown while it's an intense color it's also very translucent like pretty much all darker oil paint colors are that's the other thing to remember with oils the lighter the color the more opaque it's going to be the darker it is in all likelihood the more translucent it's going to be that's just that is the nature of oil paints which is just fine Uh, let's see, trash was right before almost all through the house. Everybody was painting, both James and his spouse. Well, it was, uh, it'll mostly just be me. Uh, because Kathy doesn't do any of the late night painting. Like, at all. But it does, that is quite the verse right there. That is quite the verse. And I salute that creativity. Yeah, Kathy, pretty much by about 10 o'clock, it is uh, pretty much nighttime for Kathy. I think for Kathy, about by 10.30 Central Time, it is lights out. Which, <laughs> on this side of the house, we call that morning. As it continued, just darken this up on each side and... Boy, when when stuff like the asphaltum and the stuff like our Van Dyke Brown starts working into this, the interior lighting will, it's just going to get that much brighter. But we have to just, we have to kind of approach this slowly and with minimal amounts of paint. This really is basically, it's tantamount to a dry brush. Definitely jerking up each of these spines. We will probably go in with the, some smaller brushes too and pick out some of these individual lines. Not just a, an endless sea of the dry brushing here. And, well, dry brushing is all relative because none of this is dry. We are using a brush, but definitely not an actual dry brush. Uh, we'll just go in this direction now. Uh, let's see. Rec uh, how are you mixing your recommended? I'm not quite sure. Uh, not quite sure exactly what the question is there. Oh, hey, thanks, Bill. Thank you so much, Bill Robertson. Hope Elias appreciates that word. He there he is. He just show wow. He's like, uh oh, that's not good. I'm out of here. <laughs> he is out of there in a hurry. <clears throat> hey, Jared, it's Tareem, and he's I will get you your book of Wapple in just a second there. Uh, I think I need to try mixing my paints again. Uh, yeah, Sinstar, that, that's why I just kind of mix them in something like a container where you can see it and actually get to it. So I think we're going to, you know, I think we already got to in the 30. Let's go to some mid 30s here one second ah there we go well we will get to some umber in this and here you know i'm not really thinking too much about this right i'm just saying okay let's let's make it light here let's bring in some dark we have a diorama base on this for sure but this is an important thing how messy was this it was pretty darn messy wasn't it it was just a big old mess and perfection, yeah, you can try and be perfect. It ain't going to get you very far. It will not get you very far at all. And practice doing, right? All the, the color swatches that we did, screwing around with the violet, 
how many how many things do we say well the violet should do this or it could do this and then we find out like oh it can't do that uh, so Jared I hope you are doing okay there All right, Astrovox, one second. We'll get you some film noir. Just a second there. I'll be curious to see actually what this looks like with the with all of the saturation removed. But I just want to get in this this last little bit of dark over here before we do that. So let's see what happens here when we get ourselves that. <laughs> doesn't look quite so dark anymore does it that's the trick of the the cadmium scarlet over here that cadmium scarlet that is why all of a sudden he just looks white he looks almost like he is white by comparison because that cadmium scarlet I bet you didn't think that was gonna happen did you now we're oh, here let's just grab something that has some other lighting and that's very different, isn't it? So two things with interior light sources, but one has cadmium scarlet, the other one does not. And look at the one that doesn't. Because the darks on this thing aren't that much uh, darker than what's on here. But yet look at the difference between those two. Huge difference. Now, oh, thanks, Astrovox. So we do that every so often. And we'll try some other time. It would be easier, obviously, if I didn't have a gargantuan bow rug sitting here in my hand. All right, there's a little bit of asphaltum that just worked its way into that. And now even maybe a little cadmium red deep. Might even throw a little umber into that, too. Because we're going to try and do some stuff now on his hands here. Claws, hands, fingers. Because we've been messing around with the wings for a while. Let, let's uh, move on to some other areas here, too. And now you can see we're starting to bring in some of those other browns, making it a little bit darker. Yeah, Stila, I'm going to have to figure out some way to get the two of these suckers side by side. Uh, it might just have to be on my terrain board. Obviously... I could just take pictures of them separate in the same in my same photo booth and just Photoshop them next to each other. It would just be fun to have them actually side by side. Oh, thanks, Valley Dweller. Yeah, there are actually forty chapters to the Book of Wapple, and they're just they're things that some of them and Nessie knows. They're Ones that have been around forever, like if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. We also have some ones that apply to basing, like nothing replicates nature better than nature, which is why I use stuff like tree bark and trees, instead of necessarily trying to sculpt all that stuff. And the film noir, as we call it, that is really handy, because that way you really get to see Okay, what what different types of contrast are there? Because people always focus on contrast, value contrast. They never talk about color contrast. They never talk about saturation contrast like we have here. They never talk about edge contrast. Non-metallic metal, edge contrast, big deal, huge thing. No one ever talks about that. There's warm versus cool contrast, so there's color temperature contrast. There's all kinds of contrasts. Oh, let's see. Uh, and then there is the one true brush. I'm going to let's see. Let's uh, ask you about, have you done any 30K, 40K nights before? Uh, Astrovox, I've done a ton of 40K stuff with free. You can check that out on the blog. Tons of that. Uh, I haven't done any of the... Uh, I'm going to start doing some Space Marine things and oils very soon, including my winter-themed Space Marine chapter. Yes, Backlog Battles, it belongs on the carpet, on the clothes. It belongs in all of those places there. 
and the one true brush is the before there was time before time began even there was the one true brush it is worshipped everywhere especially here yes the one true brush why because we found those things years ago and what were they five bucks or something like that where's my package of them here we go yeah it's five dollars for a package of 12 right here and these things well let's just say that we don't use sable brushes anymore because these things they're multi they can perform multi roles when they're brand new and pristine well I think their role was kind of obvious when they get a little bit worn down I'll well, see how they start to become like a homemade filbert brush like that they can do even more when they get really worn down you chop them like this now you got yourself a spatter brush you've got yourself a oh a, a stippling brush right and we sort of uh, use that on our T3485 so here's an example of something that's a little bit more maybe modern than a bow rug sort of we painted this one up uh, this was during uh, Sporktober as well I think yeah we did and we painted and uh, our lovely little tank riders there yeah here's looking at you hey Betelur how are you doing uh, let's see spider-man how are you doing uh, let's see real quick for support Oh, you got your dice bags. Well, that's cool. And uh, definitely, uh, folks, be sure to check out Armored Wolf's inventory of wondrous, amazing dice bags on the Armored Wolf Etsy page. Ah, so we haven't... <laughs> they've restocked. They've restocked them since we sold them all out. Uh, that, look what that's starting to do now. Now we're really starting to see some of the yellow in there. And that's just a reddish brown. That is not anything like black or, or anything. It's just reddish brown. It's all it is. It can be much darker than that. We can, whoops, we can also add some of our indigo to that and make it even cooler. Yes, we can. I want to see what happens when we darken down the edge of the blade here just a bit yeah I think yep that's what we wanted to do there gonna make a, again the fire just stand out a little bit more that interior glow I'm gonna get a little bit of Van Dyke brown in there especially on his arm over here and you can see how look, we're not crushing the brush, right? We're caressing the brush. We always must caress the brush. Do not crush it. That's in the Book of Wobble too, right, Nessie? That's in there. I'm just going to throw a little bit of cadmium red deep in there. Ah, ha, ha. That just, that just boosted up the coverage right there. A little bit of cadmium red deep. Just re Wow, that did some serious work on the coverage. It's like a mid-range version of the uh, Cadmium Scarlet. And then as we move along with this thing, we'll do some more of our some more of our film noir and we'll see if we have boosted the contrast more and more and more. But it certainly looks like that's what's happening. Uh, let me see. So Bachelor, I hope that you are doing well. Yeah, we used to get the, a lot of low Cornell uh, synthetics, but basically now we get the Windsor Newton. The, now I just get the quad zeros. I used to get the double zero and triple zero. Now I just get the quad zero because pretty much everything else is handled by the Royal Langnickel brushes here. And that's what we call, we call this the descendant of the one true brush here because, well, there's 30 of them. And they come in even more sizes, more wondrous things. Yes, we must we must cradle the brush and not smash. I've seen people that look like they are 
it looks like they're physically trying to break that brush in half. I'm thinking, how do these people not have arthritis or something? Because they just they have a death grip on that brush. I don't even know how the heck they can paint. Because it looks like that brush is about to snap in their hand. And I'm thinking, that can't be comfortable, painting for hours that way. Uh, let's see. Uh, Backlog Bells is trying to scribe into the plastic with the brush chip. There you go. Is that what you you're putting the you're trying to not sculpt with paint? You're trying to carve with paint, or just the brush? I guess just the brush. Hey, avocado kids, how are you doing? So yeah, that was uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good thing you weren't in the house here when I was trying to get the label printed up for that box because it took 42 minutes of being on the post office website to get that one label printed. Yes, it was insane, even for the post office. As Hello, hideous as their website is, my it took 42 minutes to get one label printed, but we do have ourselves a new follower, Galador. Thank you so much. And Gandalf says, welcome, little hobbit. To Whoa. What's that doing there? Ah, stupid dwarves. Uh, so how are you doing there, Galador? Yeah, it's they obviously they changed their not very well functioning website to something that functions way less well. Because clearly that's how you improve things, is by replacing it with something that is even worse. And they really managed to do that. So that that's another reason. Uh, I also, I had tried previous days to print out labels with no success. So yeah, that, that's kind of the hazards of international shipping and the post office. And now now we're starting to see... The, the central core, and that, that central core is going to get lighter. You thought that's the lightest it's going? No, that's going to get lighter. The stuff around it is getting darker. So I uh, just uh, do it okay there, Galadur. We finally had a chance to do the turkey stuff on Saturday, so that was good. We Obviously, we didn't do any of the stuff on Thanksgiving because we were both streaming and stuff so it was really nice to finally get down to some actual turkey and other such traditional type things I'm going to find a couple more of these yeah some of my stuff that I sculpted in there I don't want to lose all of those And it's just hilarious how this becomes, it's like a fan brush now. That started out as a very pointy, well, pretty pointy, uh, oh, what would you say, a uh, number eight? Yeah, it was a number eight round. We've turned it into now a uh, number eight fan brush, pretty much. Yep, Galador, I realized that, uh, and that's the, that's the hard thing here when people say, wait a minute, you're streaming on Thanksgiving? Why are you doing that? And we say, because for the entire rest of the world, it's Thursday. Like Thursday, just regular old Thursday. But here, um, just with all of the, the stuff going on, uh, holidays like that can be a little bit uh, trickier to try and manage. And especially when you're also streaming on the holidays, too. Uh, let's see. I think we're all caught up there. And we'll just continue to work in some of our... some more of these darks here and there, there and here. And yes, all this will get even darker. And it's going to get a little bit of a temperature shift too as we start to add in some of the indigo. So now his, his horns, 
It's starting to look a little bit more like horns. We just, I had to give that paint a little more time to set. I tried doing some stuff there, and the paint said, uh-uh, you're not doing nothing yet. See that? See that big chunk of light paint that I just picked up? That is why I had to wait a little bit on surfaces like the, the horns and such. You can hear the sound of that. That uh, That is just getting rid of some of that excess paint because we want to have as little as possible on that brush. Now, there's all these little sort of cut marks here, and the darker I can get this, the better. But the oils are going to want to maybe fill that in, too. My ganja. Uh, hey there, Zizax. I'm just going to pronounce it that way. Hopefully that is correct. Gana is like, whoa, <laughs> that's hot. And he says, thank you very much for that follow. Do you have some ganja, though, as we got Valfera in the house, too? Thank now, this is, uh, this is that metal bow rug that I was telling you about. Yeah, he was brutal. And you can see all of those lovely, gigantic pieces of pewter. That's all solid pewter right there. Now, I, I filmed a video last night <laughs> of me uh, kind of doing all of the sculpting, all of this stuff in here because there was nasty mold lines and gaps. I also took my water effects and made extra flame here and actually on his blade as well. So, Valfera, I hope that you are doing well. I also filmed the uh, the basing process here. But now we're going to get... Uh, I'm also going to put some, some... paint some cracks on the chest, almost like a lava crack, sort of, because, well, kind of a lava monster here anyways. How's about we grab a little bit of that cadmium red deep as well? There we go. It's it's kind of having the same effect that the cadmium scarlet did on the light side. Now it's starting to have that same effect on the darker side of things, which is very handy. So Valfer, I hope that the the rest of the weekend was good for you. I know you are here on Saturday. Oh, geez, Saturday didn't we set the? I think we set ourselves a little bit of a record on Saturday too. Yeah, that was pretty nuts. All right, I'm gonna go even heavier here with some of that cadmium scarlet. I hope you ah oh, you can see what I'm doing there. All right, not cadmium scarlet, cadmium red deep. This is probably the most. This is already the most I've ever used the cadmium red deep. Just happens to be the Gamlin cadmium red deep. I I'm sure that the Windsor Newton or the Oh gosh, the the Williamsburg. I'm sure there's not a huge difference in when it's a genuine cadmium red. I think they all are going to be closer to equal, maybe. Well, you would hope they are. Oh, yeah, there, there, there was no rest for the wicked on Sunday. There was absolutely zero rest for the wicked here. I filmed two videos. Uh, I know I was I was still filming this at 5:15 this morning, and that was that was just me building the bases and and building up the fire here. So yeah, this this uh, that's why this session didn't start till what was it 6:30 instead of six when I was hoping to have that start. Ah, uh, so Bill, are you saying we've already sold out the asphaltum? Are you saying we've already had that effect on the the newly wondrous color of asphaltum? They're just going to have to realize, and they probably were keeping stock on all of the other stuff that we've sold out, and they thought, ah, oh, we're good now. And all of a sudden they went, dang it, what's going on? There's another one. Oh, let's see. We'll so be... say we all. So say we all. Oh, thank you so much, Spider Ben. Thank you very much for the gift subs. The 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 Fanchion Red. Well, first of all, it's going to obviously it doesn't have 
it doesn't have the dreaded cadmium in there so for folks that maybe worry about those type of things it's it's basically like a cadmium free but this is cadmium red deep so this is a much darker color than the fanchion red and as much punch as fanchion red has it's still not going to have quite the same punch of a cadmium it it has that the cadmium's always just going to have some more hitting power to it fanchion red is close i mean it's a it's a beefy juicy color but it's not quite the same not avocado bits them are avocado bits that's what they are they're avocado bits actually avocado that's the one thing that we we gotta get some avocados in here we had all the other goodies and stuff but no avocados so sad well i'll catch you later there spider-man Uh, let's see. Watch we'll highlight and likely track down the copy of the stupid miniature. We'll catch you on Friday if you're still streaming. Yeah, uh, Spider <coughs> Spider Man. <coughs> I'm hoping to do the uh, what is that? The conversion Thursday, right? Conversion corner on Thursday. And well, let's see. This Friday is December, so most likely maybe so, uh, more Song of Ice and Fire winter theme stuff. Or it could be winter theme commission figures. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what's going on tomorrow yet. So we'll figure out something for Friday, though, and see you then. So I'm, I'm just going to set this brush on its side here. And it's uh, got to be as gentle as possible here. But you can tell that it is, it's mixing, right? There is mixing that's happening there. It's not just a... A dry brush over the top. We'll continue to dig in with some more darks here because I just now so we also have to start thinking about okay, there is some object source lighting. I mean, there is this flame that's sitting over here too. So now we're going to be reworking that a lot. We're basically just kind of slapping some stuff on. Even this, uh, even though it's getting a little bit more delicate in our application here, this is still very much a just slamming this stuff on. There is much lighter, more delicate stuff yet to go. This is where it really is handy. Areas like this, the oil paints there having that wet paint in there now here's where the fanchion's kind of handy as sort of a middle range here so that the fanchion is a uh, let's say you're looking for something that's like a cadmium red medium that doesn't have cadmium in it well then fanchion red is probably your best friend right there oh it's also cheaper uh, yes maybe Maybe not vastly cheaper, but uh, it's more of a regular color. Anything that says cadmium in front of it, well, it's also going to have a a hefty price tag, whereas something like Fanchion Red, not quite as hefty a price tag. And we're actually getting in a decent amount of Fanchion Red right here. Uh, let's see, you stole the mountain... Are the monolith in Utah for metal chunks in paint bottles? Um, well, it is possible. Actually, I think I melted it down and made this. It took that entire thing to be able to make this. So if you're wondering where the monolith in Utah went, it's right here. Well, this is what's left of it anyways. Well, let's get some more of our darks over here too. We don't want to forget this arm. Don't want to forget this arm. And a lot of this now is the Fanchion Red. And, and you can see it's got it's got some ability to do some coverage too. We're also starting to think about unleashing some of this on the base here too. 
See, the Silent King claimed it for the Void Dragon and his Necron. Oh, yeah. Yeah, eventually that's something I'll have to snag, is that, that Void Dragon right there. Now, I suppose that could be an interesting experiment for... Oh, gosh, what the heck are those things? The, the Green Stuff World, uh, those, those pure metal pigments, since apparently they have... They actually do have a gunmetal... Although, I would just, I would prefer to just paint the thing instead of messing around with the, the metal powders. And I'm sure that probably was evident uh, by the end of that video that I filmed. I'm sure that was uh, quite eminently uh, understandable there. I just, I had had enough of those things by the end of the video. Oh, yeah, the old kid. I think the first time I ever heard of the... Oh, it was uh, Gilbert. That's right. Yeah, Gilbert was talking about the all clad stuff. He he uses that all the time when he's doing his titans and everything. So there's some cadmium red deep now on these extra little scales that we did here. Let's put a little bit more... Okay. Yeah, that cadmium red deep. I'm really enjoying that. Wasn't sure what to expect from it. Not in this situation, anyways. Glad to know now that it's it is sort of the inverse of what the of what the uh, I always want to call it cadmium orange, but I'll just I'll, I'll say it's it's cadmium scarlet. I, I think there might actually be a separate cadmium orange. This is, you know we're starting to get a little bit of the little bit of that darker red down here. I mean we could do some obviously some object source lighting that way too. I'm not going to do too much on this base here. That that's going to be like one of the last things that we do, if we can even manage that on stream without just constantly wiping the paint away. I uh, just uh, just got a uh, can red deep too and it it really is unbelievable, isn't it? I I I wasn't really sure it's like, oh yeah, cat whatever. You know, it's a what an urban myth or something like that that it really is that intense and then you actually use it and you go, "Oh, yeah, it's that intense. It is, I mean, wow. I and mean, look at what it's doing right here. And that's over wet oil paint, too. There's several layers of wet oil paint there, and it just goes right over the top of that. Now, of course, I mean, look where my hand is. My hand is closer to the end of the brush than it is the front of the brush. And I'm constantly going back to get myself some, some fresh color here. But look at that shallow angle of the brush. Very shallow angle here. It, it's almost like we are just holding it practically parallel to that surface. I'm using just very, very little paint. And that is a big reason why it dries so much faster than what some of these other folks are telling me. It's like, man, it takes days for it to dry. I'm like, holy smokes. When I do the, the, the swatches and stuff, sometimes those will take days to dry, but that's because I'm taking oil paint right out of the tube and piling it onto that board. Okay, so now we've got some of the the lightest colors into his eyes there. We're going to get some of that into his mouth, such as it is. Oh yeah, yeah. Here, but there's been times where I've I've touched a figure maybe six hours later, and there's parts of it that are dry to the touch. Now, it will also depend on what colors that you're using. So not every color is going to work out that way. 
Some colors will dry faster than others, no doubt about it. Your, your cadmium is definitely not one of the faster drying colors. Ironically enough, colors like, well, even Terra Rosa is sort of a faster drying color. Uh, I think we're all caught up on that chat there, and I'm going to just try and grab one of my beat up sable, not sable brushes, and we're going to try and throw in some really bright yellows here into our fire because yes we can go lighter than that we we actually can especially where the the source of it is uh, let's see painting ultimate oh yeah yeah that's a that's a slow drying color that's a color that's going to have a little bit of shine to it as well So that is uh, that could definitely be contributing to certain things. I can't remember the last time I used ultramarine blue. I used to use it all the time, but then once once the indigo and, and even now stuff like the Prussian blue came out, there was less and less of the ultramarine blue being used. So now really starting to pile in some extreme lights here into our fire uh, let's, let's just keep doing that let's keep doing that here I'm gonna have to really sneak this brush into here somehow it's like around that wing This is why I like to have these beat up sable brushes like this. Because this is really beating the heck out of it. And unlike, say, your acrylic yellows, this is this is gonna cover almost better than some darker colors would. It's the crazy thing about the oils. Generally, the lighter colors are going to cover better than the darker ones. Although, once you kind of learn how to make those darker ones cover, all of a sudden they don't have any problem covering. Just uh, some lessons that need to be learned. Also here, can I... I'm going to actually do this, I'm going to see if I can't do this anyway, via a little bit of a pin line wash here. I'm going to grab another one of my, yeah. Let's see if we can make this work here. It's pretty thinned down. Let's see if we've got it thinned down enough. It's not quite spreading out. I didn't necessarily need it to spread out too much. Let's uh, throw a little bit more of our thinner in here. So this is almost more the classic sort of vehicle painting type of a thing here. Where you just drop in a little bit of that. And it flows into the crevices kind of all by itself. Then we can go back over the top of that and we can sharpen up a lot. There's a lot of stuff we need to sharpen up here. I'm going to try and find some light. See on his arm here? Right at the, the apex of these or I don't know what that, that kind of almost like a spine on his arm right there. We also have these little cut mark things here. Let's see if we can't fill those Something maybe that's a bit lighter too. Yeah, now they start to look a little bit more like some cracks in the skin. Oh, let's see, on day two of trying, lots of fun. Oh, you're working on a grot. And well, that's another thing too. Sometimes the miniature that you're playing around with, there are, are some figures that 
are a little bit easier maybe as a first oil paint experiment figure than others. But I just uh, I just hope that it's something you can give it a, a couple of several decent good tries. Because I know what I thought I was going to be able to do with the oil paints definitely shifted once I actually started doing them. Because there was stuff, well, I assumed. I said, well, okay, I'll never be able to do this with the oil painting. This will be great. This won't work. And it turned out all those things actually were very much possible with the oil paints. But I had to kind of—I had to try some different, some different types of miniatures and such. Oh, Lake's Rocky's War Room. I'm gonna see if I can throw it right here, and then over here. I'm just trying to really get some strong definition there with my lightest lights. And all of this is most definitely wet into wet. As now we physically are using essentially a very wet paint here. As in liquid. However, it's actually not going to take as long to dry. Because some of this paint that I'm applying right now might be as little as 5% paint. And the rest thinner. Yeah, could very well be. And as I do this, I am so glad, because this right here, this whole second area, that flame doesn't usually exist. That is not there. All that's here is this one top spine. And even that, I, I added stuff too. These this, these second and third waves of flames there, those are not part of the miniature. Those were added on. That's why I included in the, it was just a, <clears throat> a quick little Patreon video that I filmed. I thought, you know what, I'd like to have some kind of record of this process. And, and I filmed it. I will be editing and rendering that tonight. That'll be the first Patreon video to to go up on the page for October or for December. Sorry. Um, <laughs> there will be moments in it where I sound a bit uh, consternated, to say the least, because there was a whole bunch of crazy things going on. Oh my goodness! It was almost comical at times green stuff sticking to me not where I wanted it to and all kinds of hilarity going on I'll catch you later Stila uh, so Stila you will be hitting the Korean barbecue place on the way to where you're gaming right and probably on the way back I just assume because you're probably running low on something I'm sure there's a paint or something you're running low on you should probably get yourself some more of that. Now here is a place where I just said, uh, I'm just going to fill that in with green stuff. That there, there was supposed to be some kind of a scale there, except there was also a gigantic gap there. And I said, you know what? I will just uh, mine the gap, fill it entirely, and then I'll just paint the texture in there. Say the heck with it. Uh, they can't fight to when it's oh and start practicing on your Reaper bones too. Said ah oh you know uh, since there are some of those Reaper dragons like there's one of them that I thought I would use as well I suppose I could use it as Smaug. I, I would sort of prefer to use it as maybe another type of dragon or something like that for for a game of Lord of the Rings. But oh yeah I'm really looking forward to painting some regular dragon dragons with uh with the oils here. I mean, this is sort of a mini dragon. I think you've seen the Chimera that that we did here. Oh, what's happening there? Ah, see, those are getting darker. But we're just doing those with a regular brush here. And again, that's got some indigo mixed with our our umber. Let's see, let me... Uh, minus the lint, of course. <laughs> The lint is less helpful. Man, yeah, that uh, oof, that that already makes me hungry. 
just thinking about some Korean barbecue. All right, back to my indigo and Van Dyke Brown. We mix them together also. We talk about the different types of thin paint, right? Well, this is a different type of thin paint. Uh, thank you so much, Rocky's War Room. Thank you very much. I will, I'll give you a salute there as soon as I can, but like we say, we got ourselves a fistful of our rug here. But thank you so much for the bitses. Now the the thinner the thinner paint we were using before, think of that as more of a dry type of a thin paint. Now we're getting into the, I guess you would call it more traditional thin paint, where it's actually kind of a more of a liquid here. Oh, do you actually, uh, Rocky's War Room, uh, were you going to be painting any of the unmade on, on a stream, actually? I just I just realized. I know that uh, really during the podcast, that's a little bit too distracting to try and do that during the podcast. Uh, like Glacier says, the, the lint adds texture. Uh, the, the lint could be uh, part of somebody's cloak that he just ate. Would be something like ah, see now, and I, I'm not making the entire scale black. I'm I'm doing part of, well, and it's not black either. It's mostly it is that indigo mixed with mixed with that Van Dyke brown, which it makes it look more like an ashen sort of a black as opposed to a just a a dead just like ivory black or something. So yeah, you can really compare the two sides there. That side to that side. Really starting to get the uh, some juicy dark contrast there. Oh wait. Then where we've got our little cut marks here. Ah, painting the war cry stuff for the beginners. Well, that's good. Actually, I'll try to uh, I'll try to send them your way when they say, "Hey, Jim, what about beginner stuff?" And uh, they say, "Well, go check out Rocky's War Room." He's got stuff specifically to help beginners. So actually, that that's uh, good to know. Ah, look at that. Yeah. We'll keep doing that here. So it's again, it's not just all about the the big broad brush strokes. Sometimes we actually will get to do some finer things. That could probably use some little bit more actual paint in here. I'm just going to let that be blended a little bit more. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, Rocky's warm. Cheers again. And I think we got a, we have a second-hander. Boom. There he is. He's like, whoa. That's, it's getting warm in here. It's getting really warm in here. I'm out. <laughs> He's like, well, he does have his own little, he has his own micro rock there. Oh, David does ask, do you happen to have a document for your hardware? Oh, David does. It's been the same stuff all this time. It's the, well, the Powett camera here is an a very ancient IPVO, was a presentation camera. And the miniature camera is, as it's been for years now, it's been the, the old reliable C920 Logitech. And that is it. Now, I do have a newer IPO, IPVO presentation cam. Well, I have the Hover 8, but that's pretty much saved for, well, ironically, it was saved for live appearances. We're not really going to need that for, well, not sure when I'll ever need that again, but I'm going to probably use that for the some of my battle report stuff because it, that the that's just a camera that points straight down. But the, the camera on the miniature is just a Logitech 920. Now the, the 922 and what was Oh gosh, the dreaded 930. It wasn't until after we had gotten those that I read these, what do you call those, the customer satisfaction things or the reviews on Amazon. 
only to realize that the just get yourself a 920. Don't be getting 930s or all that other stuff because they're basically just more expensive, not as good versions of the 920, which is crazy. But then I started listening to some things on YouTube from from streamers, and they all said the same thing. Save yourself the money, just get 920s. They are the old reliables, and until they make them physically bigger, they won't get any better. Of course, now every camera costs a whole bunch. Ah, look at the difference this makes. Look at that. Look at the difference. You thought we were never going to get there, did you? You thought you were never going to see those darker colors there. Because that, that Hover 8 camera, that, this was it last summer? I think it was last summer. I got that thing for $159 on eBay. Now it's 600 and some odd dollars. Same exact thing, only a year older. Ah, uh, and those were the sculpted ones. Those are the sculpted Ah, see how it's starting to look crispier and more crispy? Ah, there's this. Yes, this one knows all about that. So I'm looking forward to actually giving the Hover 8 to try. Uh, oh, Thistle, have you had a chance to just play around with, with yours at all yet? Uh, just to see how easily it works, say, with uh, with something like a Streamlabs OBS or whatever? Oh, look at this. Now I'm going to... Oh, this is going to be fantastic. Yes. There we go. Now... Oh, why don't we do... Why don't we do... The, and actually, Rocky, I'm, I'm going to bring this up here. It's part of the camera. Oh, look at that. Huh? Remember when he was as bright as just the flame part? Every part of him was? Now, not so much. So that's in the... It's in the... Uh, camera controls here so let's I could turn that down a touch because I have the focus point there is no autofocus here as you can see I'm just manually changing that myself so I set the focus and I just stay there I don't move oh thanks David does yeah this is it we're three hours and 19 minutes in and uh, we've been really having a blast here I was hoping that this would work out. I really had to do some heavy-duty work on the base, and we added extra flames here. So those flames are not part of the figure. These second and third layers of flames, yeah, that's not, that is not usually part of the miniature. Yeah, this so I'm... There's a, a couple of things that I really need three cameras to be able to do the battle report, which basically takes you to every other camera that I've got. I need a dice rolling cam, I need an overhead, and then I need sort of a table view or a scenic camera. So those are the three cameras that I've got, and we'll just see if those will work. Uh, Adding in some some of our brightest lights here. It's the color intensity. So if, if you're in your C920 controls, there's brightness, contrast, autofocus on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side is, is your color intensity and your white balance. Also, white balance, you have to set that manually because it doesn't do well with the white balance either. Basically, the auto stuff is terrible at everything. It's terrible at focus, color balance, terrible at all of it. So the more we lighten this, the, the more... Now it looks like there's some serious energy in this, this locale right here. Some serious energy there. Uh, I need to just get that like there we go. So now see how those are really starting to come out nice and sharp edge there. Yes, yeah, this so I'm thinking that's going to have to either that's going to be the dice tray. No, actually that's actually going to potentially be maybe the ground level camera or the uh 
cinematic camera mostly because it's got its own swing arm and it's got its own controls but we'll see we'll see how that works it depends on how much of the terrain gets in the way that sort of thing now ah, you were able to find it there rock yeah it's the the black and white thing that is on the uh, the top right hand side hello little hobbits spark my ganja <laughs> Thank you so much, Earth Rogue, for that follow. And look at this. We can we can do this now. Gandalf also says thanks. When there's it's a big old tail right there. Maybe I'll light that on fire. Psst. But this is so different after painting the Easterlings and all of the uh, all of the blue marble. And now we're getting in all of the flamey colors here. Hey, zombie brush. How are you doing? Here, let's uh, go back to. Uh, let's see if I'm gonna use this one here. Where there it is. Going to use that and gonna see if I can get a couple of these. Just a little lighter, not the whole thing. Not the whole thing, but even there, some of that paint was coming off onto the brush. actually added some fire over here too it just it was a chunk of metal that like it stopped right here magically it's like okay, why did it stop right there it seems an unusual place for it to stop so i made it continue i'm also going to make some of the, ah see we're getting the nice toasty white hot fire in here now yeah and guess what we still haven't added here? We still have not taken the fluorescent paints and gone over the top of this. Yes, we can still do that too. Yeah, this so it's a whole new puppet show. We have we have an actual Gandalf here. And and the Balrog uh, is gonna apparently spark the ganja, so to speak. Hey Mark, how are you doing there? Ah, uh, the total hours on the bow rug. Well, let's see, Mark. Uh, I can tell you right now that it took longer to get this thing to the state where I could paint it than I have been painting it right now. I spent more time filing mold lines, green stuffing, maybe uttering a few colorful metaphors along the way. Also creating the base, creating the fire. So ultimately, it will probably take just as much time to prep this as it is to paint it. And we're, what, three, uh, three hours, 15 minutes in here. Potentially, maybe another three hours. Because I also got to include the, the base in there, too. I have to be doing some stuff on the base. Now, here on his house, I'm just going to light a few of those. Not everything equally, but just a few. Uh, well, thanks for thanks for coming in to check out uh, check out the Balrog here. I've I've been looking forward to this for quite a while, and I was especially glad when I found this thing. It's actually when I first started moving some some furniture stuff in the downstairs uh, filming area. That's when this guy was uncovered. It literally was like digging in the deep. And, and the dwarves uncovered a Balrog, quite literally. And it it still it has the uh, it has the little Gandalf too. So we'll we'll try and paint him on a stream too at some point. I'm gonna start filling in some of these really deep areas here with some of that white. And it's kind of an off white there. Well, Nessie knows, uh, you know that the story of my very first tournament of any kind with my Lizardman army, with all the scratch-sculpted engines of the gods, and the person that I was playing had that nasty habit of leaning on the table. He would sit down, and he would lean on the table, and I would say, you know, every Wednesday, you come in here, you lean on that table, and basically, it was a piece of plywood stuck on this metal frame 
not attached it was just it was just resting on there and every time he would do that he would collapse the table and I'd say you realize every time you lean on it like that the table collapses and you can imagine that he proceeded to lean on the table until it collapsed and all of a sudden miniatures started walking off the table to their deaths on the floor and the only reason he is still alive today is that because he was sitting there the table stopped and when it landed on his lap and his army acted sort of like a speed bump so basically his entire army was on the floor maybe about a, a fifth of mine was on the floor yeah <laughs> thou shall not pass and the only reason he is still alive today is because of that and and he he would just say look here's i hear you need liquid green stuff here's four containers actually he was the one that told me about the color shift paint or, or the iridescent stuff yeah oh no the metal medium that's it metal medium so i just added a couple oh look at that some dark lines in there sharpen that up very nicely so yeah, the whole metal medium thing, you have that, that experience of table collapsing in the tournament and then him uh, being terrified of me and giving me a jar of metal medium. Ah, look at that. Look at how sharpens that up. We were able to do a lot of that with our dry brush stuff, but now we're able to really get in there. I could pretty much just walk up to him and say, that looks really neat right there. Um, can I have that? Yeah, 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 sure, here. Take it. And that was, yeah, that was the entire Lizard Man army that was heading off the table, including two scratch-built engines of the gods. There was even a scratch-sculpted pterodon headed to the floor. Yeah, that was an uh, interesting, interesting tournament. Actually, it's the, uh, the only tournament I ever won. That's right. Now I'm going to go back to my, here's my lighter color again. Yeah, I just uh, I would walk over him to him. It's like, wow, that's a... That's a neat new box of, uh, I don't know, they got yourself, is that some more Galadrim elves you just got? You know, I could use some more Galadrim elves for my army. I could really use some of those. May or may not put the elbow on them a couple of times. Yeah, let's throw a little bit of our cad yellow deep in there. Now it's a... Uh, a little bit more of a lemon yellow instead of just a white there. Uh, Rickle pick, I use the, the oil paints. When I'm just doing this, it's going to be all oil paints. But once these dry, let's say there's a time constraint and I don't have that 6, 8, 10 hours for it to dry. I can definitely use acrylics over the top of it. You can't use them both at the same time, obviously. And here's a, just a really quick example. I think, is it, yeah, this was one that it was mostly done with oils, but the deadline, they said, oh, no, we told you next week it needs to be here two days from now. So I went, oh, okay. And then there was this one, which you can watch on stream, where they said, no, Jim, that's not 10 days from now, that's four days from now. Because it, the wrong person was telling me the date. So I had to finish this on stream in acrylics. The key is the paint just has to be dry. Now I'll let you beat me in a song of ice and fire. Hey, Toofs, how are you doing? It's like, yeah, you know, that's a... That's a really nifty Corsair army that you've got there. It would be really a shame if something were to, I don't know, to happen to it. Uh, now, see the little bit of detail in those horns there? 
but we we did an awful lot with a gigantic brush, didn't we? Before these ever came out, and as Nessie knows, what's one of the what's one of the chapters in the Book of Wapple? I am the Lord thy craft brush. You shall not put other brushes before me. Yeah, well, we did that here. We're also going to get ourselves, oh, man, a little more orange here. A little bit more. Ah, that's what I'm looking for. Wow, some of that's actually drying over there. Ah, that's better than the yellow. Ah, that's better. I also have to thin this down. Darn it, a panel, panel line wash. Ah, Toos has been busy. Yeah, that's, I, well, I can definitely understand. I can definitely understand that. Well, hopefully, the, maybe at a certain point here, the the work lets up. Ah, thank you so much, Rocky's War Room, for the cheer. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, Rick, uh, Rick will pick. You can definitely do that because that's what I did. Those miniatures that you saw, and you go back and watch the... Uh, it's, that's the King of Malefica. That was probably... I want to say in September. So go back and watch that. And you'll you'll see that we we were doing glazing, we we're doing all kinds of stuff. This thing here, once this is dry, I can put whatever I want over the top of it. Now, yeah, zip zap it, like you say, the the oils are great for any kind of a wash because you get no water marks because well, no water no water is very handy. It's a handy little thing, isn't it? I'm just going to get me some of my orange into here now. Ah, yes, a Bits Creek, baby. Ah, Nessie's going to do another Jedi for Legion. Are there any of the vehicles that have any sort of a glowing, almost like a plasma-style weapon? I don't really think so. I mean, when it's actually firing, I suppose, but I don't think there's any sort of the typical sort of Space Marine plasma stuff, though. Oh, here we go. Just getting a little... I'll ah, touch his orange there into his face. And it's so funny, Rocky, because it, it was no big deal because, I mean, I got I got a win out of it because, well... Uh, things weren't going so well for him anyways, but he was so afraid, and I just, I, I just, I would just say, like, oh, okay. And like, here, here, take this. I'd be like, um, okay. Years later. And it, this is uh, quite hilarious. So I'll catch you later, Dragon Eye. Have a good night's sleep. Oh, that was the record that we set uh, on Saturday. We had nine levels of hype train. We we had a, I think we had a four in the early part of the session, and then about an hour later we had a level five come through. That was pretty crazy. All right, now they're starting to kind of really bring out the details in the face. Let's see what we can do here, maybe on the fire itself and then we're gonna you know what let's let's just put a little bit of our floral yellow back out here again <laughs> I might also do a little bit of cleaning on my my hand there too with my my thinner here or my uh, trusty cleaner so let's just throw some of our and yeah I just have to use this out of the tube because well didn't have a chance to mix that up. How's about we just grab ourselves a paper towel here, like that, and we use some of our cleaner like so. We'll just get some of that out here. And away we go. Oh, look at that. Now that's funny. That's where... That's where the Sculpey base is sticking into my fingers there. That's not paint. Where did we last see that? Huh? Where was the last time we saw something like that? I think it might have just been uh, that. Yeah, remember the last time? 
when those stupid, uh, not claws, the, the stupid spikes on her head were sticking into my hand the whole time. That was painful. That really hurt. That was done with oils too, by the way. Uh, let's see. I have already dipped my toes into painting with the acrylic, but when I started... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. Rick will pick because it wasn't until I saw a Facebook Live where someone was using oil paints, like regular oil paints out of the tube, and I said, wait a minute. It wasn't MIG ammo oil brushers or anything like that. It wasn't AK Interactive. It was just regular oil paints out of a tube. And I said, I can do that. I I have oil paints. I wish to also paint oils with miniatures. Or miniatures with oils. Now, oh my goodness, yeah. Wow. We could still add more intensity to this. Yeah, sure enough. Some little nice, super bright, intense batches of... Oh, thanks, Ashton. Uh, my brain is uh, is fried from writing a few eight-page papers this week. Oh, that is, that'll is that definitely do it. That will definitely do it. So th thanks again, Ashton. I really appreciate that. I'll get a little bit of that over here. Now, of course... You almost have to kind of stipple this stuff in here. You can't paint it on. You have to just sort of almost dab it on. And I'm, I'm really looking over here at the, the sword. I think it could use some more intensity over here. But if you can't get, because I know Marion Street, they do not ship overseas anymore. I don't even know if they ship to other parts of North America these days. But the the cadmium colors will take you a really long way. You don't necessarily have to have the fluorescence. The fluorescence, it's nice to have them. They're not essential. Uh, that will fry the brain. I've been making D and D characters nonstop, and oh yeah, that's a. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like you lose track of what's D and D life and what is just regular life. Now nah, we got to really hit this side over here. This I could really use some. Uh, what is one mini you think everyone should paint, whether it be fun or to improve? Actually, I would say anything that has just a, a nice cloak on it or a big cape or something like that because that will that is the one surface that's probably the easiest to get blending and oils down. Yeah, typically, usually something like a Reaper Bones or whatever, right? They Tons of mages and sorcerers and all that kind of stuff that adventurers, wanderers, they all have cloaks. That's probably a really good thing to maybe start with. Because that, that first miniature can, in many ways, just determine whether or not you like the oils. And you want to make sure that you're giving the oils the, the, their best shot, right? By painting something that's going to hopefully be fun. All right, now I am going to see if I can use... Mix a little bit of the cadmium orange here with some of that. So, or cadmium yellow with my fluorescent orange here. And a little more. We did this in the beginning. We're kind of floating around back to it again. Don't want to use the cadmium yellow light because it, it'll just turn it pink. Uh, let me see. Fantasy, does anybody have a problem with the Amazon site? Uh, oh, Fantasy World, uh, what the heck is this called? Cyber Monday or whatever? That's probably why. That, that, that could have a lot to do with it. Could be Cyber Monday. I could be wrong, but 
I, I, yeah, I'm just assuming that's what it is, that Cyber Monday, everybody's on there looking for TVs or whatever. Uh, they had to write a bunch of college paper. Yeah, well, hopefully that you're able to recover from all of those papers and such. And let's get a, let's get a little bit more of the yellow in here now. And then we're going to have to go back in here strong again with our, just like we did on, on that area there. We'll have to go back in strong with some lighter stuff here too. Sometimes we have to throw in some of the darker color before we can throw in some of the lighter color. All right, we'll do this. Now let's see what we can do with some lighter stuff here. Focusing on the sword blade, which good is on screen. I wasn't sure if it was, but it seems to be. And that should make a big difference there. Heck, I might even go lighter than that. I might just go over here into the brilliant yellow pale. And just uh, create a few little wisps of flame here and then maybe go over the top with some of the cadmium scarlet. Maybe even a little bit of the cadmium red deep because we know what that does now. We've had a chance to really mess around with that. Let's see what we can do on the outer edges here of this sword flame. Yeah, looking for these lower areas to be lighter. And even this is not necessarily the lightest we can go. We can actually go a bit lighter than this. I think we're all yeah, we're all caught up on chats. And if we've been calling these our micro filberts here, these what are they? Oh yeah, the number one rounds there from a part of that Royal Langnickel set. It's not really intended to be used like a filbert. We just kind of use them that way here. Where's that cadmium yeah, red deep? I'm gonna just really pop some of that into here if I can. That's better. Uh-huh. Sometimes you just have to crank in some darks. Now, Rickle Pick, yep, everything is, whether it's acrylic or oils, or if it's terrain or whatever, everything gets primed. And I just prime it with something. Well, here's our Stino Res. It's from Badger. This just happens to be the light flesh color. It doesn't have to be that, but you know, just uh, just like the stuff that we were sculpting here, right, with the green stuff. We were going to put some primer over that. And I, again, whether the figure is acrylic or in oils, it's always going to be primed. I also prime bones figures, which, which really causes a lot of consternation for some folks for some reason. Uh, does anyone paint? Uh, does anyone paint work for miniature painting? Uh, Ashton, that's been that's how I've made my living since well, basically about 2002. I used to do 2D art back in the day, but unfortunately, 9/11 uh, did to us with what a, what this is current situation is doing to a lot of independent artists right now just basically wiping out their business and that's what happened to us in 2002 and we ended up becoming miniature painters and and once you do that that's pretty much a 24-hour a day seven day a week commitment 365 days there are no days off there are no such thing as that 
So yeah, let's see, we we lightened up some areas, we darkened some others. The Rocky's War Room, it's just, uh, there's really no special technique to it. I just, uh, just kind of brush that stuff on. Uh, sometimes if you get, the, if you do get some bubbles like that, maybe you just, you take another brush that doesn't have any primer in it, and you just kind of spread it out a little bit. That can also help. Speaking of some help here, why don't we get some Finch and Red into this? Oh, okay, that does any paint work for a minute? Oh, Ashton, uh, sorry, I thought you meant something else. You can use anything. I I don't, well, even with the oils, I'm not necessarily using expensive paint. It, it is, it's really ultimately going to come down to you and what you prefer. Now, there are some paints that aren't going to work quite so well. Some of those craft paints, those aren't going to necessarily work quite as well. Yeah, I've never, never had it actually bubble or anything like that uh, after it dried. And I don't really do anything special again as far as the, you know, the brushing it on. I know I did one of the, uh, it was the Rohan series. I actually was brushing on several different colors of primer. Now this, I'm going to say, okay, maybe there's a little bit of optic source lighting on the leg here. Best if I just turned it so you could actually see it. Well, I'll catch you later there, Jarrett. Thanks for hanging out. And folks, be sure to give Jarrett's terrain minis a follow. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to Stipple that on. Couple reasons. First of all, there is a texture there. Second of all, stippling is kind of that just generic. Wow, he has a lot of toes. One, two, three. He has, well, I guess five and a dew claw, if you want to call it that. If you want to make him more like a doggy. Yeah, and yeah, you definitely don't want to have too much on there at the at once. It's kind of like anything else, just less is more. And ultimately, more just becomes less. Where's my, ah, good, I do still have some of my cadmium yellow out there. And we're going to do a little bit more of our stippling here. Again, just thinking of some object source lighting, maybe. I mean, what the heck? I mean, he's got himself a big old flaming sword there. We'll just have it reflect on his leg there just a bit. Not much, just a little bit. The old mini monsters just painted their first non-metallic metal sword with the oils. I hope that it was fun and I hope it was it was fast because boy that's really what the oils let you do. They make it so much well they make it easier to do everything really but especially the non-metallic metal. Now you can see I can only get so many brush strokes out of this before all of that darker stuff comes off. Got to go back. Got to get fresh paint. Like so. So it's just catching a little bit of a, on his knee. And now the knee kind of comes forward right a little bit. I'm just trying to make that come forward a bit. Well, I will catch you late. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the three-year-old is definitely going to be merciless and not quite understand. Well, I had to watch this, this painting class. I had to watch it. They will not care. They will have no pity, no mercy. So thanks again, Sinstar, for hanging out again. All right, there's another. Where's my orange over here? I see another one of these guys. I'll just fill that in like so, boom, like that. A couple other ones maybe. And then we'll, let's see if we can lighten up the inner part of that. I'm going to thin this down. I think you can see it. Boom, there. Now, an 
underside of his uh, belly right here. Let's see what we can do. We'll thin this down a lot. And we'll see what we can do here to just uh, kind of get some of the cracks into this. And I'm definitely going to have to stipple this. I can see it right now. I, I guess I could have made it thicker, but we know that the stippling kind of stuff also works. Okay, I just want to make sure that's on screen for you. You can see it. And I'm going to try and put some of these lighter things in, and then just like some of the, like a freehand design you've seen me do before, I might go back in there and add some more dark. Just like the darker colors we added up there, we'll, we'll do that down here too. Ah, so at least I ah, likes the way well, you definitely you want to get them started as early as possible. You can never start them too early. All right. Oh, good. You can see that. This area is another area of uh, of fudging here. Again, because there was there was two gigantic metal pieces that met here, and let's just say they didn't fit together super well. So a lot of green stuff had to be done there. And by a lot, I mean a whole bunch of green stuff. So I'm just kind of uh, really just painting in some lines here. And then we'll go back in with some darks. Like we've done a couple other areas. Where's my... We'll just use this. So let's go with some of our asphaltum, maybe a touch of that red. And using this again like a micro filbert here. We're just going to put that little dark touch there. We're going to do another one right here. So it starts to break that up. All of a sudden, that doesn't look like such a ridiculous, crazy, yellowish line. It looks like it's part of something now. Put another one here. And where's my... There it is. And that we can throw something like this, a much darker color over the top of that and I think it's uh, there we go yeah right, now you can really say it. it's I don't want it to look necessarily like armor plates but it starts to look like there's some kind of interior glow that's that's generated there and we can also if we do this can see how all of a sudden we've got some subtle look at that it's like we're getting more of those little grooves and, and channels in his in his body there where maybe some of the the heat is kind of pouring through we'll get zip zap his film noir in just a second here especially oh actually especially after doing this could be very interesting so it's that cadmium red, deep, like that. All right, let, let's see what we have. And now when we go do our film noir, boom. Ah, look at that. Yeah. The wings now, all that stuff has some value there. Remember when the, the entire thing basically looked like the flame that's on his back? Not so much more. And look at what we just did on the chest there. See how that's got much more color to it. Oh, thank you so much, Rocky's War Room. You know what? I can also turn up my brightness a bit here, too. I just realized that. Yeah. 
No, oh, thanks, Rocky's War. I appreciate that. The Balrog appreciates it. He's like, yeah, more bitses. More bitses for me. It's like, no, Balrog, you have to share. You have to share the bitses. That makes him sad. He gets to be sad, Balrog. We'll throw a couple oh, on uh, maybe here on his horns. Well, thanks again, Rocky's World. I appreciate the those bitses. It really does allow me to do this kind of stuff because otherwise it would just be nothing but commissions. That's all it would be. There would be no Twitch or anything like that. It would just be commission stuff. Which I would just kind of be, well, for many years, basically all I did was I just sat here and painted commission stuff. And that's how it was for years and years and years. This is way, way, way more fun. As in a lot more fun. Being able to interact with everybody. You know what? Let's play around with here. So now that I've got kind of the indication, ah, see, that's our cadmium scarlet doing some stuff right there. You just, you wouldn't think it would make that much of a difference. It doesn't look that light on the pad. It's very deceiving. But, ah, see that? There's no, that doesn't exist there. That's not sculpted in. It was never, never there. I just painted that in. See if we can do a similar thing over on this side now. Again, taking some of that cadmium scarlet. Uh, outsider miniatures, actually, yes. The the entire Song of Ice and Fire, pretty much most of the stuff you see me paint, Song of Ice and Fire wise, on stream was all commissioned stuff. The entire Targaryen army. That was all commission stuff, the, the dragons and everything. Uh, the Baratheons that you saw, also commissions. And I try, well, it's just the reality of some things. Uh, like that, that one uh, other, uh, was that the Lannister alternate kind of color scheme there? That's also a commission thing. Ah, look at Look at that. That's just a suggestion of that. That was not really there. There is no such texture there, but I looked at my I looked up at my uh reference there. Oh zip zap, that's uh it's just a. Uh, it's their name for it, just like Egyptian violet. Why in the heck are they calling it Egyptian violet? Or what's the something like Fanchion Red? I have no idea why it's called Fanchion Red. I think sometimes they're just trying to amuse themselves <laughs> by giving things names. It wouldn't be the first time that some company gave paint some weird names, maybe just to have some fun with us. Yeah, <laughs> like Beckel says that the Balrog shares nothing. He says it's all mine. But what we're also going to do, uh, let's get some more of these dorks in here. Yep. I will let a little bit of the, that's that quinacrinome, that's another thing there. It's quinacrinome golden brown, which has a whole bunch of the same properties as brown matter. Who knows, it may be even made out of a lot of the same stuff. But one company calls it one thing and another company calls it something else. I wish that wouldn't happen. But there are a couple extra actual bits of texture that were not there before. Uh, mini monster paints. Where the heck did that go? Oh, it's sitting over here still. I should probably get the cap onto this thing. So let me just set that down here. And actually, my wife uses this for her acrylics. I've used it for acrylic too. It works for both. It's fantastic for either one. It's it's not uh, doesn't have any vapors. It's not flammable or any kind of crazy stuff like that. It's really handy. I really like it. 
and it's done very well for cleaning the brushes. So it's uh, it's kind of a win-win-win all around, that material right there. All right, now we're into a little bit of our Fanchon Red here. And, oh, now you can, now I think you can see it. I just couldn't reach this with the big old brush, so we're going to use our micro filbert to, to do some of this. And I think you can see what's happening. We're starting to put in that same sort of extra additional texture here. Oh, there is your link to it right there, Mini Monster Paints, and we welcome back Paint Miniatures. How are you doing? We're just we're having fun with Balrogs here, because Balrogs are fun. Who doesn't have fun with Balrogs? We're going to find ourselves some more dark. Yeah, this is our Cadmium Red Deep, by the way. Cadmium Red Deep. Making that a little bit darker here on the bottom. Yeah, it's something we will go to smaller brushes. Not everything has to be done with the big giant brush. It's just, well, you make way more progress much faster when you use the big giant brush and you're using the oils to their best advantage when you use the larger brush. I'm going to see, I'm going to take this brush here and just turn this enough. Hopefully you can see what is going on, but I'm just going to try and break this into some more, some more of these weird sort of scale shapes. It's shapes that aren't actually there. Literally shapes that do not exist here. Now we'll just try to make folks believe that something is there. Not many monster paints. I'm glad that hopefully it was also uh, some informative there and gives you a little bit better idea how to keep pressing on with the oils. And thanks again for watching. I appreciate that. Some of those texture lines, we're actually just painting. Instead of always relying on that almost like a dry brush stroke, as you can see, I'm just going to paint some of those in here. And they, the paint has been thinned down as far as more liquid added to it. I just move some of these brushes out of the way there. And I do apologize again if this moves into just either a, it moves out of my focus point or there's a weird reflection that happens somewhere. Typically when I'm painting the miniatures. I really try to manage that a lot. But when you have something not just this big, but this heavy. This and see here. Actually going in there and painting some of those darker wisps. Now maybe this is something that I just do for several hours at a certain point. Maybe this is something that you could wait for that to dry and then go ahead and do something like this. But you can do finer details with the oils. That is something that I had to just kind of discover. I thought at first the oils is... Well, I, I wasn't just going to use it for weathering vehicles because obviously that's, that's what everybody thinks of it as and, and does with it very successfully. But I thought, what if it could do some of that that bigger, like all the wings and all that kind of stuff. What if it could do that faster? Uh, Paint Miniatures is reading books with the kids, getting ready for some bedtime. Gotta get the kids off to bed. I do believe Kathy now is already asleep. Since I, I'm looking here and it says it's 10.35. Eh, I'll, I'll do, I'll do some stuff out as 
fingers here, but that, that's another area where it just might get rubbed off. Where is my... there it is. As I see another couple of these here that I'll just kind of fill in with some of that. Good enough there. I think you could see that. I might a little bit of stippling right over here. So see the, the thing that we did on his chest here? See how that the stippling? The color remains behind. If I try to brush that on, it really wouldn't want to stick there. There would just be too much paint in an in area. But using that stippling brush joke, we got some of that paint to stick there. Rotate him over this way just a little bit. See if we can't take some of that same orange color over here and maybe do some of that same sort of... Yeah. Again, just give the impression that maybe there's something here. Break up that big old surface. Now I'm going to see what I can do here along the top edge. And it's going to be a bit like what we were doing just a, a bit ago. This could be a bit more tricky because I have nothing to balance my arm on. And so we're getting some of these darker rows in here. And as you can see, uh, as I change the pressure on the brush, it changes the width of the of my lines. This is kind of on the watery side so it's definitely got a much more of the thinner in it and you can see we're being pretty direct now here we're not doing the whole stippling thing right we're doing boom one brush stroke and that's that's it 